And we are live here on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content channel. My name is Tony Vicenda. I'm Chief Alchemist here at Plus One EXP, which is a weird little brand that multi-classes in tabletop game design, beard, and skincare alchemy in the Bardic College of Content Creation. Our hope and desire is to help amazing designers find great players who love their games and amazing players find great designers whose games they can love. We do that in a lot of different ways, but the most fun way is just sitting down and playing those games uh, until we die, or at least our characters do, because today uh, we're playing a Mothership third-party module called This Ship is a Tomb uh, with the creator James. Hannah James, why don't you tell people who you are, what you do, uh, where they can find you online, but also tell us a little bit about This Ship is a Tomb. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. Uh, and thanks for having me. Um, yeah. So I'm James. I live in Indianapolis. And uh, uh, yeah, you can find me online pretty much everywhere as bull, as Bullfrog Jam. And uh, yeah, we, we are uh, ending our first week of the uh, uh, campaign on Kickstarter for This Ship is a Tomb. So uh, yeah, if you had to uh, gosh, I don't know the link. You off can the go top to ttrpg.link slash this ship KS and it'll take you straight there. Amazing. Uh, look at that. The technology coming through for us. Um, yeah. So, so that's pretty much, um, that's pretty much that. Yeah. We're, uh, we've been developing this for about six months and uh, running a few play tests. And so this is, uh, this is a great chance to kind of uh, see how we do with it. Awesome. Uh, this is part of our our two part. Who's your mothership? Uh, Indianapolis Bay Creator <laughs> Mothership Modules. Christian is over in the chat and says, "Hey, hey, hey!" Uh, to everybody, I know James hopped in for a little night, a little bit last night to watch. Also, as we played that, if you want to watch any of our past videos, uh, including the mothership module we played last night, Bloodfields at Black Star Station. Uh, or if you have to pop out for part of this one, hop over to YouTube uh, and check that out. But again, that link that'll take you straight to the Kickstarter campaign is right below my face right here. Uh, it's also in the show notes if you're watching this later. Uh, but let's meet the folks we're playing with um, from all the way across the country coming back uh, yet again. Uh, our, my good buddy, Riley. Riley, why don't you tell people who you are, uh, what you do, where they can find you online? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Riley Coyote, and I am the creative lead for Afterthought Committee. Uh, we do some level zero funnel adventures and some odd games from people from all over the world. Uh, I'm happy to play Mothership First Edition for the first time. Um, and yeah, if you want to find my stuff, you can go to afterthought.games. Uh, but it's probably a lot more fun to follow me on Twitter where I shitpost all the time at King Coyote and Coyotes with a Q Y O T E. Awesome. Uh, join us for the first time. We've got Bree. Bree, why don't you tell people who you are, uh, what you do, and if you want to be found online, where they can find you. Okay, sure, yeah. Um, I'm Bree. Um, my pronouns are they, them. I am an actor um, and a circus artist and tabletop player. And um, I can be found on Instagram. I don't have a Twitter. I have a Twitter, but I don't use it. So <laughs> probably not the best place. My Instagram is at workerbee um, with no, I think there's no E-R for the worker. Awesome. Uh, I'm very excited to, to have you both here. I'm also very excited to discover there's just an animal motif uh, in in the house. Like that's I, I do love that. Um, but definitely, uh, um, uh, I'm very excited to dive in. Before we get started, we use a couple of tools here uh, on stream to just make sure our game stays on track and everybody's comfortable because we play with different people from all over all the time. Those are the lines, veils, the X card and the open door policy, um, uh, unless the system dictates another system. Unless the game dictates another set of tools. Um, the uh, lines are things that may happen in the universe of our game, but don't happen in the course of our play of it. They're off limits. Uh, veils are things that may happen in the course of our play, but we kind of handle them in a specific context. It may be fade to black, move past them, only addressing them if it comes up within this specific type of situation. But they're things that we just kind of handle um, in, a, in a specific context. And then the X card is the ability for anybody at any time to say X, pause the game, identify an issue that's uh, a problem for them, and then we'll just pull that issue out uh, and move forward in a different direction. Um, and we may add a line or veil when we do that, uh, but we may not. And then the last thing is an open door policy, which means we are 
uh, real human beings, even if we aren't playing ones, uh, and we have things we need to do, like eat, drink, uh, talk to teenagers who might come up on screen uh, <laughs> next to me in the middle of a stream or whatever. Uh, all those are normal, real things that happen to real people, and since we are real people, we'll do them if we need to. Um, and that's just a normal thing. If you need to do any of those things, you should also. Um, we have a uh, strong line against sexual violence and sexual coercion here on the channel. We like to leave everything open for a conversation about the context of the game specifically, though. So um, does anybody have any lines or veils that they want to add to that list? Cool. Yeah, and like you said, no sexual violence. And, you know, I, I brought it up earlier, but the main thing for me is, like, keep any sort of unnecessary bigotry to a, to a minimum, you know, there's, there's only so often you can explain it away with context, I think. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, James, any caution warnings or anything you want to tell people about the adventure we're about to get into just so uh, people watching have a heads up? Sure, absolutely. It is a diabolical derelict crawl. And so there is some, um, uh, certainly some, if not explicitly demonic, but, uh, you know, there are evil forces aboard this ship. And uh, as such, there's there's also going to be uh, certainly some gore, some blood, um, some some of that uh, graphic imagery um, that violence may or may not manifest in the game itself. We'll see. But uh, but certainly that imagery um, will be present. Awesome. Cool. Um, and excited to hear, uh, mean, uh, mean deep has already gone over and backed this. They're very excited yeah. uh, to see what they're in for. And so, uh, with that said, uh, James, I'm going to hand things over to you to take us into All this right. ship is a tomb. All right. Thank you, Tony. Um, and, uh, yes, welcome to all our players. Uh, so yeah, let's start by, uh, simply introducing, um, your characters, and so if you want to go around and say your uh, your character's uh, class and their name, uh, pronouns, and then any other sort of visual descriptors or character uh, personality you want to uh, share to start with, um, and and I'll, I guess I'll add too that uh, uh, this is a I think you guys are, are playing a crew that's been together for a little while. You've you've done a few jobs and um, are, are probably comfortable and know each other, um, and uh, yeah, so there you go. Does anybody else want to go first? Because I'll probably flex my character out a bit based on what's going on. Uh, Marie, I feel like yeah, you said go you... Oh, go, go ahead, Riley, then. Oh, yeah, you did say that, B. Go ahead. That you've gotten in the mind of your character. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your character? Sure, sure. So um, um, I'm Marcy. Uh, Marcy, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm 48 years old, and I have a pit bull named Brock back at home. And he is just the love of my life. I love him very much. Um, and I am a teamster. I am a mechanic on uh, my my ships, and I I am a stout woman um, with very unkempt hair, uh, very usually unwashed. I don't like to take lots of showers. I've I've read that your microbiome is where all of your you know, your energy comes from. So I'm trying to really cultivate that around my body. So I don't try to wash away too much of it. I think it's important to have, um, you know, we are animals after all. So that's, that's what I am. Outstanding. Right on. Uh, my name is Arch, Arch Newman. I am a Marine. And uh, the first thing you notice about me is that most of my face and neck is pockmarked from an acid attack. Uh, and uh, probably no hair, shaved, just like a, a straight with a with a straight razor. Um, and yeah, the 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 type of person who uh, is gonna shoot first and ask questions later, probably. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, love it. I, uh, I'm 33B. Uh, I'm the ship's uh, android, and uh, my, my main job is just keeping things uh, floating. I, I think um, like I'm a little bit closer to uh, the, uh, the uncanny side of the Uncanny Valley. Um, very, very awkward. Uh, very much uh, it's evident that I am an android. Uh, the most uh, human thing I do is um, I have a, a classic kind of um, over the over, like eighties, uh, Walkman style, uh, like music device that I walk around constantly listening to, uh, classic <laughs> hey, nice. tunes from the past on, uh, as I'm doing stuff around the ship and kind of 
uh, whistling in odd, like perfect pitch concert to whatever song I have to be listening to. Um, and what whistling means can be highly variable. Um, and so, yeah, that's, uh, that's 33B. Excellent. Uh, great to meet you all. Um, yeah. And so, uh, you have, uh, your own ship that you have, um, uh, taken out to, uh, to try to find, um, this ship that is uh, that is known as uh, the Advent Dawn, um, and it is uh, rumored to uh, contain untold fortunes, uh, troves of data, alien technology, all kinds of uh, uh, gadgets, and 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 who knows what else could be inside there. Um, it's known to be dangerous, but uh, uh, you have heard about its location and. Uh, have found your way towards it. What do you think that um, your crew would uh, maybe be looking for in this ship? I'm looking for parts. I like to see what other ships have and salvage those. They can be used on all sorts of things and they're useful in all sorts of different scenarios. So I'm just looking for what I can find on this ship that I can use for later in life. Uh, I think I do have some sort of, uh, I think unbeknownst to everybody else, I do have some sort of corporate programming that is driving me towards this place. Um, but as far as everybody else knows, I'm just along for the ride. All right. Nice. Yeah, and I, I think I, I suspect that there are some creatures here that might have some, some glands or some organs that we could harvest into uh, some new medicines. I'll bring those, bring those back to base and see what the doc can cook up. Excellent. All right. Uh, and as for uh, how this will go, so this ship is a tomb, uh, runs on a procedural generation system uh, that's really developed by uh, Emmy Allen uh, for like the Stygian Library, uh, which is published by Soma Pub Publishing. So if, I definitely recommend checking out that book, outstanding book. Um, but uh, so the way that that works is that there's multiple tables um, that you roll on to generate uh, a new location on the ship. Um, mm -hmm. So rather than um, since we're um, since we're streaming, uh, it's uh, it can take a little while to, you know, a few minutes to kind of like put together a new location. So what I what I did was go ahead and um, choose a few locations and details. Um, but then I thought you guys would roll the uh, the encounter for each location so that we could have uh, experience some of the randomness um, that uh, that the module is um, is trying to deliver. Um, <clears throat> And just so you know that uh, that e each time we visit a new, new location, we'll have uh, somebody roll a d10, and then as you get deeper into the ship, um, that sort of uh, it's like a loaded die, and so uh, each new level adds one to the result, and uh, you can get um, into scarier and scarier things as uh, as you get deeper into the ship. Uh, so, any questions um, before we get started? Not for me. Awesome, awesome. So, um, in the um, interest of expedience, I think we'll uh, sort of uh, cut to uh, or open on your ship, um, uh, uh, beginning to approach um, this much, much more massive vessel. Um, it is. A, it is a. Um, it's known to have been a, a colony ship at one time before it mysteriously vanished. Um, but otherwise, um, you don't know too, too much about it. Um, but you do see this, um, this, uh, this giant ship before you um, as, you're, as you're approaching in your own vessel. Uh, what can, would you like can to I do? ask, yeah. uh, did we find it because of like a beacon? Or uh, how, how exactly were we led here? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that, uh, yeah, it probably has, there's some sort of signal that, uh, that your ship can, can track but I think you were also maybe given some uh, intel about its location. That uh, it, you know where this ship appears, um, people uh, people sort of eye it and you know pass on the oh did you hear? Yeah, yeah, okay. The ship has appeared. Yeah, very cool. So it's kind of a ghost ship. A bit, yeah. In fact, that's uh, that was the working title of our of our uh, <laughs> kind of, of a ghost room. ship. <laughs> 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 kind of a ghost ship. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Who's driving? Uh, I'll drive. Okay. I don't have any points in piloting, but I'm, I'm, 
I'm, I'm, fine. I'm, I'm smart. You do that R two D two thing where you like stick your finger in the yeah, port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm very, I'm very jacked in. Like there's, uh, there's on the, on the Walkman type device, there's, uh, there's another router that just comes in, so I can jack, like just like instead of like I can pull down from the headphones and then like jack into the, the system. Awesome, perfect. Yeah, yeah I'm putting on all my armor. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, polishing my gun for the third time today. Getting ready for a what I hope is going to be an epic battle. <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, uh, 33B, you do spot the, um, your ship is sort of, uh, I think you're so connected into uh, your own ship that it's, it's uh, almost secondhand to uh, find and pilot towards the, the uh, docking port um, on Advent on. And uh, as your uh, as your ship does make that connection, uh, the uh, the pressure balances and uh, the um, airlock hisses and uh, opens up to reveal a you know a, a room that large enough for a few people to fit in, but it's otherwise uh, empty. Um, there is a, a, a computer terminal there, and then it looks like access into the rest of the ship. Excellent. Um. I am going to make my way to the computer terminal. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. Uh, and accessing it, uh, go ahead and uh, make me a computers check. And so this is this is uh, it's it's again very easy for you to use the computer. Um, and so this is actually for a little something else. Well, mm -hmm. the good news is uh, I rolled a sixty nine. Um, <laughs> Nice. The uh, bad news is I don't know if that's actually underneath my computer skills. Um, uh, with my bonus, it is actually. Yeah. We're good. Oh, nice, nice, excellent. Uh, and so yeah, you are able to uh, to access um, the computer, um, and uh, you you find a, a sort of a schematics of the ship and uh, other information about it. Uh, is there anything you wanted to to try to learn? Um. I would um, love to look at the, um, are there like security or um, surveillance logs? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you can uh, in fact find that, uh, that the ship was last accessed about six months ago. Okay. If that's the sort of access you were looking for. Yeah, sure. Uh, was it, was it, does the access logs imply somebody coming onto the ship and then leaving the ship again or does it imply only somebody coming onto the ship it does imply someone coming onto the ship um yep there's there's no record of their their departure okay and also you did not see any evidence of another ship around it no other ships docked nothing else like that correct mm. uh, okay um uh I'll, you know it looks like there was a ship that had docked about six months ago but I didn't see one on our approach. Is there anything else y'all would like to know? Hmm. Does the ship look like it's in like total disrepair or does it look? Mm. It, it looks uh, neglected, um, but it looks like it's, it's, it's definitely in working order, but like the mm -hmm. power is low. So like not all the lights are on. Um, it's definitely not been cleaned in a long time. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, six months without another visitor uh, would imply that someone or something would have had to get rid of that ship. Is there any way to access some sort of security feed? Um, is, is there video surveillance in the, within the ship? Uh, yeah, so you, you definitely can get, uh, it, certainly of the interior, uh, you can uh, get the uh, pull up the feeds from that. Yeah, I just want to get a. Get, uh, I want to let's see if I can um, pull up the feeds from wherever they docked. Um, like, was it the same location that we yeah. docked? Is there only one docking location? Hmm. There is. There is only one docking location. Okay. Um, it is like you can. You could have multiple ships there. Um, you know, given different sized ships, but uh, uh, yeah. So you can. Uh, you definitely see. Uh, there's a crew of uh, about five or six people. Um, and uh, you see them making their way through the the docking port, um, and you see them. Uh, you kind of the the camera jumps to sort of the next location, and you see them entering another place. Um, and then uh, let's see, yeah, 
33 b go ahead and make me a, uh, give, give me a just a d10 roll just a d10, just a d10. Roll? d10. Mm -hmm. i got a 10 okay uh yeah so then you watch as uh, sort of one by one each of them is is overcome as their their faces um change as skin begins to grow over their mouths and eyes and nostrils and their faces just become just these um, skin masks as they each of them expire in this terrible way i'm like leaning in and leaning in and looking closer like i'm really interested and then i say do you see that man's got a pulse rifle on his back <laughs> <laughs> we have got to find that <laughs> Um, let's have, uh, let's have, uh, folks make a, um, a sanity save, uh, for, for this, Ooh, uh, yeah. right off the bat, getting yeah. right in the ship. Uh, is that one D10 or two D10? Yeah. Uh, two, uh, yeah, it's a D100, uh, or okay. two D10. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Uh, All right, I so my a, I rolled a ninety-seven. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay. Uh, I got eighty-eight. I rolled an eleven. I didn't think I was gonna get under thirteen. <laughs> Wait, oh wow! You rolled an eighty-eight. Yeah. Oh, that's a. Uh, uh, wow. That's that a, that's worse than a ninety-seven. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, uh, so doubles a, are either critical successes or critical failures, depending on whether you would have failed or succeeded, anyways. And yeah. so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got a I got a critical success. You got a critical fail. Do, I, right. do I add my sanity uh, stat to it, or or it's anything? you're trying to roll under that number on two d d ten. So you rolled over. Uh, so yeah. it would it would have been a normal failure, but since you rolled doubles, it's a critical failure. That's um, right. And so and so yeah. Uh, so if you failed, you'll take you'll add one stress. And uh, Marcy, uh, since you critically failed. Um, you feel the panic rising within you, your heart beating outside your chest, your, your sweat running cold. Um, and so I'll have you make a panic check, which is a, a D20, and you're trying to roll over your stress. 16. All right, no problem. Ooh. Yeah, you're able to rein it in. I, um, as I sort of clutch my chest and get my bearings, I say, there's got to be something in the air. We we need to we we need to, to to seal everything off. We we need to we need to be wearing something. We need to be. This is not good. I have a uh, a heads up display. I don't think it's very uh, specific, but if I can like kind of tap a couple settings and see if there's any like spores in the air or something, just to kind of ease Marcy's mind. Mm -hmm. You could do it anyways and lie to ease Marcy's mind if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I'll just kind of deet, deet. like eh, as long as you uh, keep your mask on, I think you'll be fine. Oh, okay. That, that little contraption told you that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so it's not in the air. So, so what? What, what could it be? Maybe a virus. Maybe something that they contracted. Yeah, it must have been something they uh, brought on with them. I wouldn't be too worried about it if I were you. Well, I agree. We shouldn't be worried about it. <laughs> I, uh, I I pull out some menthol balm <laughs> and I, <laughs> I hand it to you and say, "Here, just rub a little bit of this on your uh, on your neck. You'll be all right." For me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this will cure everything. <laughs> I see. Uh... <laughs> Uh, this will surely cure, cure all. Yeah. All right. So, would you like to um, keep going? Yeah, there's a there's a door I assume in front of us leading That's into right. the actual ship. You got it. Yeah. So, opening that um, leads into a hall, and it's Except a, the lights are low. That's right. Yeah, it's a yeah. It looks like a sort of emergency systems, um, okay. or like a, yeah, the low power protocols. Okay, I um, will hand. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I will hand a couple of chem lights to 
uh, Marcy and 33B, you don't need to see in the dark or you don't need to light source, right? Um, I'll be fine. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I actually, Raleigh, I'm in the computer. Can I tell what's going on with the power systems? Hmm. Uh, yeah. So they are in essentially like, like I said, the, the low power, um, settings. It, it's weird though, because like the ship hasn't, it clearly hasn't been to any sort of dock or, uh, port in a long time. It should by all rights be out of power. Um, and yet it's, uh, its power systems are still just like in they're they're at the bottom range of being you know within uh you know tolerable but uh, but they're still they're still there somehow definitely strange would you like me to redirect power from our ship into into the derelict well that's an idea we can uh we can spare a bit of battery can't we uh, how much battery can we spare 33 as much as we can. <laughs> I'll do I'll do the math. <laughs> um, we might actually need a physical a physical uh, role for this, like something that's not just computers based, I'm guessing, but uh, I don't know. Is there any way for us to just redirect power from our ship into the into the dawn? Sure. Yeah. No, I like that idea. Um, I, I don't even know that it would take a, a role necessarily. Um, I think it might just take a little time for you to uh, kind of uh, get get that. Uh, like grab, literally charging. The, yeah, the big cable and watch mm -hmm. it. <laughs> plug, yeah. plug it over. Uh, and, exactly. uh, oh, giant, handle it. <laughs> giant yeah, jumper exactly. cable. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll run the, the giant cable, uh, you know, across the airlock and, and plug it in and start running power from uh, our ship, which has a great name, uh, into the dock. <laughs> yeah. It, it, the mirror, when uh, camera pans out and just the, on the side of the ship, it says our ship that has a great name. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it says our ship and then parentheses, great name. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So as the as the ship does charge up, the you see the the lights come up um, in the hall, um, and uh, you definitely note uh, now that it's better illuminated just how grungy this ship has become. It is. Yep. N not not a pretty sight. You could you could spend mm -hmm. a long time cleaning this sucker up. Is it like dusty, oily, moldy, all of the above? Yeah, all of the above. Maybe not so okay. much mold, but certainly, yeah, grimy with uh, the oil and, and dust of time okay. and machinery. All right, you two activate your mag boots so we don't slip around in this filth. <laughs> you should, <laughs> should, should talk, bring should your talk. mag boots, right? I do have mine. I do have mag boots. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we all got the mag boots. <laughs> We're like, mag boots? Got to get mag Got it. Standard good, issue yeah. on the great name. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as, we, as we move forward, I crouch down and sort of like swipe up some of the dust and look at it between my fingers and I go, dust is 95% human skin. So if there's dust here, there are people. I don't know so much about that there, Marcy. I mean, if there aren't any humans around, they're still going to be dust collecting. Not according to my calculations. <laughs> I think we need to find who's still here. Very right. well. Well, with the, the dawn uh, having greater power now, um, you uh, you can venture deeper within if you wish. Mm -hmm. I take out is my there a, uh... just to have as a weapon. Go ahead. Mm. Oh, I was going to ask if there was a, a kind of a bit of a layout idea that you got, uh, 33B. I did get a bit of a layout idea, um, <laughs> says my character, <laughs> but not yeah. Tony. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, James, I don't know if you have a way that, like, anything that you want to relate to us as far as that, yeah. or if it's just abstracted knowledge you want us to have. Yeah, so when you when you access the schematics, um, it 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 showed you the ship, and it all made sense. But like, sort of as you watched it, it also broke apart and began like rearranging itself. It was mm. really strange. It's, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I have a general sense of where things are and are going. Well, that's good enough for me. You can go ahead and lead the way, 33. Excellent. I'll take, I'll take point for no good reason um, and start leading them. Uh, let's see. What am I interested in? I, um, I want to get to uh, the the um, uh, the command deck, right? Like I want to okay. get to the bridge. Yeah, to the bridge. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, and so let me have uh, one of you roll a d10 for us, please. Okay. Seven. Seven. All right. Very good. And roll one more d10 for me, just for fun. Nine. Okay. All right. So the uh, the hall leads you to um, ultimately what you find to be uh, is very clearly the medical bay, um, and it is uh, cluttered. It is ransacked. Um, used to be white, um, mm -hmm. but it's now uh, filthy. Um, nothing is clean, uh, but the doors do seal, um, and some of the equipment appears to work. Um, and so, yes, there is, uh, there's some, um, you know, facilities for, uh, doing some surgeries and, and obviously any other, um, basic medical procedures. Um, you do see across the room, um, sort of in the corner, a, a, some kind of strange contraption um, that's uh, connected to uh, a, a film, the, the same sort of computer terminal that you saw at the docking port. There's also one of those here, but there looks like there's something strange connected to it, but it's hard to tell from here. You ever seen anything like that? I have not, I say, as I'm halfway to the uh, computer terminal. Yeah, so um, I'm going through ahead. drawers and cupboards and, you know, trying to see if there's any uh, any medical supplies to salvage. Yeah, me too. I want sharp stuff. All right. Yeah, so if you're you're searching, each of you can roll a, a, a D5, so or just a D10 divided by two. Um, okay. Or a D5 I'll, if you have one. There you go. Somebody uh, plays DCC. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 33, uh, while they're looking, um, what you see is a human brain that's floating in a jar next to the computer terminal and metallic tendrils run from the terminal into the brain and they merge into the brain itself uh, the the metal transitioning almost seamlessly into the fatty wrinkles if uh, if any of the other characters were paying attention they would hear me whisper I've always wanted one of these. Uh, as, I, <laughs> uh, as I as I start accessing the uh, the computer terminal. All right. I got a uh, three, by the way. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you find a, a small portable uh, oxygen tank. Okay. I got a five. A five. Um, it's uh, it's not sharp. Uh, might not even be useful, but it is a working stethoscope. <laughs> right. I'm going to give Marcy the oxygen tank uh, and say, hey, next time you're feeling a little bit stressed out, you go ahead and take a hit or two off of this. Ooh, Keep I'll your mind at ease. I'll do that right now. And I'll put a, my mask on. And just... Oh, that is good. You know, back home, we'd had a, we had oxygen bars. They could flavor this stuff. Oh, yeah. What flavor is that one? Dust. <laughs> Excellent. Ah, it reminds me of home. You want a hit? <laughs> nah, you go ahead and keep that. I got, I got plenty where that came from. I'll take just one more. Just one more. <laughs> okay. Put it in my rucksack. Awesome. What you got over there, thirty-three B? Um. There is an interesting computer bank set up here. I walk over. What is that? And I point to the brain. I'm not a doctor, but it does appear to be a human brain. Well, I mean, I know that 33. Why is it here and why is it hooked up? I'm attempting to determine that if you'll wait just one second. <laughs> well, touchy. 
<laughs> and so 33, yeah, you uh, tap back into the computer just as you had before. But as you do, uh, some sort of interference seems to disrupt um, the equipment. And uh, it you, you see that like on any of the screens around, uh, this interference seems to be affecting all of your electronic equipment. Interesting. Um, as I stop trying to access anything, what happens? The interference remains. Uh-oh. Does this look like, um, you say interference, does it look like, mm. um, like signal noise, like some sort of waves hitting the ship and causing this, mm. or does it look like a system disruption, something internal to the ship that is causing like static or a feedback loop. It definitely seems uh, internal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I don't know that I'll be able to determine exactly what this is for, uh, unless potentially we take it back onto our ship. I say grab whatever we can. If it ain't bolted down, it's ours. Can I figure out how to... Uh, detach the cables from the computer not from the brain mm -hmm. right right yeah safely remove brain but yeah like i don't want to damage the brain that'd be yeah, make me a brain yeah. brain removal check please brain <laughs> removal <laughs> check. Sitting there or is it like on something or in something okay. i assume it's in like a container right that's right yeah yeah mm -hmm. i mean but like it's not suspended in like liquid or anything it's just yeah, no, there is, it looks to be some sort of uh, a liquid fluid in there that, uh, yeah, that it's uh, kind of suspended within. Uh, Mindy also said, take a sip of the brain juice, which most of my characters actually would. That's not a 33. <laughs> well, they thing. would, right? Um, and so um, the, um, yeah, I, I just want to see if I can, yeah, detach the, and look for a cart so <laughs> it can wheel the brain back to our, our ship later. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can yeah, we'll get a pile started. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's like a um, you know a rolling stretcher right um, in here that you could uh, at least use to carry some stuff. Um, and uh, I, I'm like wiping it off and being like, "Here's your shopping cart." <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, maybe a, a jury rigging. Uh, I've got intelligence. Okay, sure. Yeah, you can <laughs> certainly make an intelligence check. Uh, I rolled a 47, which is under my intelligence. Great, yeah. True. Yeah, so you're definitely able to um, remove the terminals. And uh, you even wonder as you're doing it if maybe this interference might even have made that, that process simpler. Um, just okay. because there's no yeah sort of signal going right now. Um, but uh, you now have a brain in a vat of uh, fluid uh, with some uh, metallic leads. This is the best mothership loot I have ever gotten. Um, <laughs> the um, uh, should we take it back now, or do, would you like to wait till later? Uh, we're close enough. If you want to take it back, great. Let's split the party. Also, uh, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna, perfect. I'm going to take wait, it back it to our door? ship and plug it <laughs> plug it in over there. Plug it into our ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you can't just leave a computer in a jar by itself for forever. I mean, you might need. Yeah. So I'll take it to whatever our more probably far more minimal med bay is uh, and try to plug it into the computer system back over on our yeah. ship. And I'll yes. just kind of hang out in the hallway and, you know, do the, the military watch. All right. So 33, you uh, begin making your way back the way you'd come. Um, and go ahead and make it, uh, just a, a D10 roll for me, please. Love it. Uh, six. Okay. Uh, and then a one more D10, please. A 10. Okay. All right. So rather than finding yourself back at the adaptive docking port, you find yourself, despite knowing that you went the right way, at a brand new location. And okay. it appears to be a, a chapel. Um, it's a small room. There's metal chairs bolted to the floor. There's a stainless steel altar uh, up at the front. And you do see a, a, a strange uh, 
kind of uh, display uh, on that altar up at the front. A, uh, a skull um, stripped bare, but Ooh. wires running into the eye sockets. I look, I look down at the brain and then back up at the skull. <laughs> Puzzle pieces. Um, and what? Where do, I'm, I'm going to go check where the wires run to. Mm. Yeah, so they they do they so they run up into the ceiling and then yeah down into the skull and then you see like as you're kind of examining it that the the wires are then kind of running out the back of the the skull and into some monitors that are around it. Uh, are the monitors experiencing the same kind of uh, interference as the other stuff was? These don't do not seem to be. And in fact, if you were to sort of check. Um, you know, maybe another electric device. You, you. See My that. Walkman starts playing music again as I walk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Into this yeah. Yeah. Um, what What song is playing, by the way? And you know what? As soon as I is picked this, like, I was like, "This is just, just not a normal thing for me." And is somebody who is better at music should do better what? Better just playing. It's just two tones, like beep. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very it's very it's it's you know uh, it's it's twenty uh, in the twenty one hundreds. The the bitonal movement was real strong. Yeah, yeah. So. That's what I'm currently working through. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. The um, uh, no, I'm happy for other players to suggest because I am I am woefully musically inadequate uh, when it comes to things like that. I think uh, it's just 21 Pilots. Yes, stressed <laughs> out. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, like kicks back That's in. Um, the um, yeah. So I um, I kind of jump with the start when the music kicks back on. Start looking around. Um, uh -huh. Is there anything else that runs into these monitors, or is it just these wires? She seems to be these wires. Um, is there any? Are there any open ports? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll plug the braid in. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. So when you plug the brain in, <clears throat> excuse me. Um. The the screens begin to. Um, it, there was there was not really anything on there specifically. But you notice like a, a, a pattern of code um, begins to stream down the, the screen. Um, Almost like kind of like I'm, I'm imagining like the, the matrix sort of like code just kind mm -hmm. of like cascading down. Yeah. Can I, uh, so I, I not only, I, I took hacking as a proficiency also too. Mm, so nice. uh, is there anything that I can pick up from, uh, from the code as I'm watching it stream down? Like, does it look like? junk code does it look like mm. can i tell what type of program or do i recognize the language like um yeah definitely you um and, and if you'd like you can make a hacking check here i think you you definitely recognize it as a code awesome um and chat y'all can be my playlist you just tell me uh what songs are playing in the background when things switch any of that kind of stuff um Let's see. Uh, I'm making a check. Do do do. Um, that is uh, 15. And so, 15. nice. Yeah. In fact, you can detect there is uh, there's some some kind of message in this code, um, uh, but it would uh, it'll take some time to uh, to get it out. But you can absolutely like uh, download that code so that you've got it. And yeah. Can... I'll put that code in my brain. Uh, that's going to be good. Um, no, I'll, I'll download that code. Um, and we can, we can flash over and find out what everybody else is doing while sure. I'm in this weird chapel by myself. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Marcy, what, uh, where are you and Arch up to here as 33 is wandered off? So, okay. So he took, they took the brain out and we found some stuff, but not tons. So I guess I would probably suggest that Archer think we it's time we move on to, to somewhere else. Uh, there's yeah. not here. I, I think we're, you know, waiting for a little bit and I'm asking you about Brock and being like, Oh, did you ever figure out how to get him to shake? Oh he you know, and... <laughs> shake. That's, that's amateur stuff. Are you kidding? This he we he and I do uh, rodeos. We do we do challenges. We do all sorts of things. We we post it. We we stream it. How do you get a dog to do a rodeo like a bull? Like we get other animals to ride him like a bull. We get him to do uh, you know little obstacle courses. Uh, my, Brock is one of the most intelligent animals. Um, 
possibly on the planet. Uh, I, I selected him specifically because of his uh, his breeding. <laughs> well, that is fascinating. I think we talked about that for a while, and I go, you know, 33 has been gone a long time. That Our ship was only about a couple of minutes back. Turn around, look down the hallway. Should we go check up on him? Yeah, we should. We probably should. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna try and just head right back to the ship where we think thirty three B is. All right, one of you can uh, make me a, a D ten roll. All right, that is a seven. All right, and just like thirty three. Uh, you find yourselves not in the back at the docking port, uh, but this time uh, it also not in the chapel, but uh, you find yourselves in a much bigger location. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's an industrial sized location uh, and it appears to be the engineering bay. Um, okay. Yeah, there's two large reactors um, that uh, are, uh, are running and uh, yeah, there's a, uh, a couple control stations between these uh, these reactors, and um, yeah, there's okay. also like um, tapping the heads up display and being like, oh, "This thing's on the fritz again." I think it took us the wrong direction. Yeah, I, I don't. I feel like we went the, the way we came, but I guess we didn't. Well, I mean, let's let's look around. That android's bound to be around here somewhere. I start checking out the equipment, the reactors, see if I recognize anything that mm -hmm. yeah. just admiring all the machinery. Yeah. There's um, it, it, as you begin exploring this, this large room, you notice that there's, there's random electric arcs jumping <laughs> off of material uh, and, and in, in between like different pieces of metal. Um, and so uh, you, you realize that like to really explore this room, you're going to have to, um, uh, be careful about uh, uh, dodging these things. Um, so you can you can keep pushing through, um, but if you do, it'll it'll take you a body save um, to avoid uh, taking some damage. Oh geez, that, right, I did I did just bad. notice. Uh, does everybody else have a personal locator or just me? I do not. <laughs> I did not take that. No. We okay, can all find you mind. if we get lost. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I'm sure that technology will work perfectly on this ship. Yeah, it'll work just fine. Okay. No Say, so be careful over there. You don't want to get your hands stuck in that machinery. Yeah, I don't want to go in this room if this is this is not stabilized. At... Well, you I want to head back to the med bay? Maybe maybe we just wait wait for uh, wait for 33 to come back. Is, 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 we don't have any way to contact him. You don't have anything. Uh, no, I mean he's usually the one tapping in, tapping into our feed. I don't, I don't know how to do that. I do have uh, these short-range comms that I that I gave him before. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, we're a crew. We've been a crew for a while. Yeah, that's right. And so I'll, I'll, um, I'll connect and I'll say thirty-three. Uh, come in. We're just we're just looking for you, and uh, we we made a wrong turn here at the at the junction, and uh, we're not sure exactly where you are. Can you can you just give us your location? And that does oh. come through for you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, so uh, yeah, I have uh, I've found myself at some sort of chapel, I believe. Um, uh, I I must have made made a a a error in. Judgment when it came to returning to the ship. Where are you? What is your location? Um, we're not quite sure exactly. We're in some sort of uh, engineering room. Um, we 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 must have taken a wrong a wrong turn here. We're a little bit turned around, so I can't give you an exact location. Um, maybe maybe we can uh, try to meet up back at uh, back at the lab since we know where that is. Um, excellent. If you're in engineering and I'll tell them the route based on the map that I thought saw for a second that they should go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, nice. As far, as far as how to get back. Very nice. All right. Uh, yeah. And, uh, 
so using those directions, you you actually are able to find your way back to the the medical bay. Um, okay. And about that time is uh, we'll switch over to thirty three B for a second. Um, thirty three, you see that um, as you've been sort of downloading this code, you see that in the corner of this room, what you thought was um, just a pile of um, rags is in fact some thing that um, is uh, beginning to take notice of you. It is some sort of creature. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> <laughs> totally normal, totally normal. Um, uh, how big is it? Uh, looks to be about the size of a, a medium-sized dog. Excellent, it's Brock. Uh, <laughs> I am, I am, uh, uh, I'll say hello there. Does not, um, return in any vocalized speech. Um, instead you hear a series of clicks and you hear the, the, it begins to, to rise up and you see that this thing is like a, a four legged, uh, the only way, the only, the best word would be an alien. It is, uh, and it has a wide mouth full of uh, very sharp teeth that um, opens towards you as it begins to uh, to move towards you. Excellent. Um, <laughs> uh, what range is it from me right now? Uh, it is, a, I'd say, close range. Okay. Um, or, yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's uh, the. Um, do you need assistance? <laughs> <laughs> it, it continues approaching. Um, I put my hand on the foam gun, um, but don't immediately raise it or do anything. I'm trying to 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 see what this thing is up to. All right. Uh, I do uh, put myself between it and the brain in the jar. Uh, <laughs> just for fictional positioning purposes. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, it begins to kind of like circle around, um, trying to get clear of the obstacle that you've placed between it and uh, you. Oh, no, I put myself between it and the... Oh, like, oh I, I, see, I move I closer to it. Oh, gotcha, um, yeah. I'm protecting the, the brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's... Um, it sort of like stands up onto its haunches and... Oh, wow. Uh, you feel a kind of almost a, a, as though your body is um, attempting to be like l wrapped up, but there is no visible, um, you know, there's no visible restraints, but you feel almost like you're being bound um, as the creature like gazes at you. Um, and Stop, and make please. <laughs> Make a uh, make a sanity save for me, please. Stop. Uh, that's not a bad roll, but is it good enough? Let me pop over my character sheet real quick. Uh, no, that's uh, it's, I failed by three. All right. So oh, close. Yeah, you you become um, immobilized uh, by some sort of uh, almost telepathic bond, um, and the creature uh, begins to uh, to close in on you. The creature which is, has this almost um, gaunt uh, skeletal frame and uh, black kind of chitinous, um, almost insect-like um, coating on its skin. Um, it, it moves in closely and begins to examine you. Um, am I able to move at all? Uh, yeah, you can definitely like move your fingers. You just can't like uh, like physically walk. or That's like, fine. Uh, I'm yeah. just going to tilt the foam gun up towards it. <laughs> uh but i'm i'm i also don't think i'm particularly fighting this hard either like i'm i'm willing to let it inspect me uh and i don't i don't do the smart thing and tell anybody what's going on <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. we're like yeah. all right so the med base here uh that means if we go through that door right no, that's where we came from i think we have to go this way i think this you have to remember that uh you know we're looking at it from a mirror image Right. In space, everything's a mirror image. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's what I remember from school. 
Yeah. Okay. So if we came in, it was on the left first. So we go down this hallway, and we're trying to we're trying to go back and find thirty three B. Right. Yeah. And it's uh, you're 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 a little bit behind, but you are you feel like you're on the right track. Okay. Yeah. Making making your way down the hall as thirty three B. Um. Yeah. The 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 creature does not does not attack you. Um. Unclear why. Um. But. Uh, it does um, does sniff around you and um, and you 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 remain held by it, um, but it does seem to sort of um, uh, not exactly lose interest, but it, it almost as if it's uh, disappointed. Okay, hmm. that's fine with me. I'm happy to disappoint in this scenario. Um, <laughs> um, does it eventually release me, or is it is it still holding on to me while it's disinterested? Yeah, it is. It is definitely uh, still holding on to you, and I I think it's about this time that uh, Marcy and Arch um, arrive at the at the chapel. And so across the room, you see this strange creature um, just kind of circling, and um, this this thirty uh, three B who's being held um, somehow invisibly. Yeah, I think I I read it as a threat immediately. And I say, you know, shout out to 33, like, 33, get down. And I pull out my smart rifle. And I'm just going to fire All right. this thing right off the bat. All right, yeah, go ahead and make me a combat check. Okay. Uh, does firearms improve that? I can never remember if that adds. It should, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, firearms uh, adds to your combat, definitely. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no need for surprise or anything, right? Correct. I, I'm like, I think I'm looking at the old stuff here. Okay. So mm -hmm. combat versus armor. Uh, that's a 55 on the die. Oh. Plus 15 for the firearms. Yeah. So be, uh, the 15 goes on. Your, oh, the 15 goes to the that's combat. combat. That's right. Right, right. Okay. So that's ooh five over. That's a fail. Mm, all right. Yeah, the, uh, the, the the creature is startled. Um, and did you roll a 55? Yeah, so I rolled a 55 <laughs> over 50. That makes it a critical failure. Okay, yeah, critical yeah. failure. I, I think that, um, and I'll let you guys decide, do you think it hits uh, 33 or does it hit the brain or? I think the... it hits 33 because if he can't move, he can't duck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and as soon as I see you, and I see like the, I yell no. Like, <laughs> it's um, too late. <laughs> you um, know me. <laughs> I'm fine getting hit. Uh, I'm also fine okay. if the brain in the jar gets hit, or the computer bank gets hit before the terminal download finishes downloading everything. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, yeah, this is I didn't tell y'all because I didn't want the situation to happen. So this is this is 33 B's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Worst scenario possible, imagine. <laughs> so, um, yeah, of either course. one, any of those things is fine with me. Okay. Yeah. So if I, if I hit you, then I'm going to like rip the, the HUD visor off because it's clearly not helping me aim or navigate. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And do, uh, do add a stress, um, for, for the fail. Uh huh. As the, the creature now turns towards you. Um, so yeah, where, um, where does that damage go? Do you think? What's our, um, uh, I rolled the D six, but I also realized I didn't determine which of the D three locations was each mm. one going on. Uh, we'll just have it hit me. That's what Riley said. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna go ahead and roll that damage. Uh, let's see. It's just a one D ten this time, mm -hmm. or whatever the yeah. That is a seven. Hold on. How does armor work in this one now? Because armor saves have changed, right? Yeah, That's correct. all the new stuff is hard to hold in my brain. Oh, you know what? Don't let's not pause stream to figure that out. I'll figure out how much damage I take. We can keep on yeah. going. Okay. Uh, so yeah, armor points. Uh, right. So if you take more damage than your armor points, the armor is destroyed, and any remaining damage is dealt to your character. Okay. So I take some damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, do I do the panic check for the critical failure? By the way. Yes, I think uh, as you, as you rip off the thing, you yeah, you're definitely feeling some some panic here. <sighs> 92 oh just a d20 oh yeah, that's yeah right, that's d20 right. over uh trying to roll over your stress 
Oh yeah, I was thinking sanity save. Mm. Uh, natural one. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's pull up the panic table here. Um, <laughs> the likelihood so, that you hit this kind of hard panic early on is very bad, but it's very good for a cinematic vibe and a short. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very, very glad. I'm just, at the at the very first sign of combat, I'm like, everything's fucking <laughs> going crazy. <laughs> And actually, um, rolling a one on your, your panic effect is like the the only good result. Yeah, no um, way. As as in fact, you like ripping off the the HUD. You that the adrenaline just pumps into you, and you feel a sense of laser focus come over you, and you're just like, it's this is the this is the shit, and you're in it, and you're ready to 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 do this. Um, so you have advantage on all rolls for the next. Uh, roll me two d ten, two d ten minutes. Oh, dang, a six and a nine, so okay. 15 minutes. There you go. Yes, you have that laser focus. And so um, now uh, 33 has been been shot. Uh, the creature uh, turns towards you. Uh, Marcy, anything you want to do um, before the creature acts here? I'm sucking on my oxygen, and I have my crowbar in my hand, and I go... And I start running toward it. <laughs> and I have I have a close quarters combat. Awesome. Yes, so you can add that to your combat score and roll combat as you rush towards it. Is combat 2d10? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 11. Ooh. That should be a success under whatever your combat score Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I don't know that yeah. it's, I mean, I guess it's, yeah, it's impossible for an 11 to not be a success for yeah, that. Yeah, because it's plus 20 or whatever, so it's, it's and it's a critical. 20, yeah, so it's 12 is the lowest possible score you could have in any stat. Outstanding. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, so you do you do critical damage to this thing, um, and uh, you can go ahead and roll uh, roll the damage. Um, That's d20. Yes? Mm, uh, damage is a d10, I think. D oh, wait, you have a... It's like a crowbar, crowbar does that change anything uh, i think a crowbar is still i think it's just I think it's still d10 yeah yeah oh it's d5 plus wounds um so mm. oh i see that yeah yeah d5 plus wounds what so it's gonna be plus two in your case okay uh 11. nice Oh yeah, you just smash through this thing. Uh, it it it's not dead, but like you you puncture through like its its armor, um, and one of its limbs just kind of goes limp. Um, but you're right face to face with this thing now, uh, as it as it turns its attention on uh, what it seemed to have been seeking, which is uh, human flesh, mm. and it is going to uh, try to uh, try to bite you. Um, so it's going to roll roll combat check itself. Ooh, but it rolls an 80. And so it uh, snaps at you, um, but uh, yeah, you dodge out of the way. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, as this happens, as it snaps at you, 33, you feel yourself released from the, from the bonds um, that this thing had you in somehow. Um, and so... Uh, yes, uh, you guys can each uh, sort of say what you would like to um, to do in this next round. And mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the creature is uh, sort of like now that it sees there's three of you, it's kind of like um, backing up. Um, it doesn't seem to want to retreat, but it does seem to be sort of um, putting itself in a different position um, mm -hmm. now that it has to face three of you. Well, I, I did hear 33B shout no. So that's making me pause. Um, and I, I think I'll just shout out like, what's the situation, 33? It wasn't attempting to hurt me. <laughs> well, sure, it looks dangerous. As they're like <laughs> up against a crowbar wielding Marcy. <laughs> it did not attack you until you attacked it. Well, we're ready now, boys. And I'm going to try to like <laughs> stick my hand inside and like rip some vital organ out. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right. What, uh, I, uh, Arch, what are you, uh, what are you going to do in this, uh, this round here? 
Uh, I'm I'm holding, just trying holding? to talk to thirty three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, just kind of like keeping the gun pointed, you know, making sure I have the one eye, you know, trained off of Marcy. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and thirty three, what are you? What are you going? I'm be not doing trying here? to stop them. Like I okay. mean, yeah, in any way, shape, or form. So I'm I'm essentially holding also, so we can just see what what gut ripping uh, <laughs> looks like, and then uh, go from there. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, Marcy, go ahead and make a, another combat check. Sorry, that's two D10. Two D10? Five, mm -hmm. um, 12. 12, wow. Uh, yeah, uh, you once again just, and so you're like, are you going like bare fisted? Or are you like trying to like shove yeah. your crowbar like down I'm, in there? I'm, I'm, one crowbar is like, like sort of protecting me like against its uh, mouth or whatever. And then the other hand is gonna come in and just try to rip something. All right. Yeah, you definitely grab hold of something. It's squishy and disgusting in there, but ripping something out. It um, go ahead and uh, I'd say that's a. I can't remember if there's a like bare fisted, um, like a hand to hand. Yeah, but you do have the close quarters combat, so I'd say you can do. Um, oh yeah, so current wounds um, is uh, what you would do. So two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so same thing. Yeah. Um, now your fist is covered in this kind of like nasty, like black green substance um, from within it. And it snarls at you. Um, and it's going to, uh, um, you see that uh, from its back, like uncoils this almost uh, scorpion like tail that tries to um, stab you. Um, so it's going to, uh, going to uh, attempt to do that. Wow, these guys are rolling terribly. Um, uh, they roll a 70. Uh, they actually got a really good combat score, but <laughs> <laughs> not that good. Um, and it uh, it misses again as you're just in too close for it to get its uh, tail attack off. Um, yeah, so this, this would begin a new round as it's uh, now... Um, looking a little more desperate, uh, but it still has uh, it still has some some fight left in it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try to take another shot then. All right. I mean, it definitely look violent. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 33. Are you doing anything this round? Uh, yeah, I turn back to the computer bank. <laughs> <laughs> totally, like, they'll handle it. Totally disinterested in what's happening over there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Covering up the computer bank with your body in case I miss again. <laughs> no, you're pointing it in a different direction now. You're, you're, you're going to hit Marcy sweet, if you miss sweet. this time. <laughs> and right, Marcy, what are you going to do this round? I'm going to try to ride it. <laughs> <laughs> going to jump on its back? Yeah, and uh, backwards so that I can grab the tail that tried to uh, stab this me. This is how you train Brock, right? That's exactly right. I'm, I'm, I'm going off that. <laughs> off muscle memory uh i got a 51 over 50 so i still missed oh, okay uh not a critical failure this time however mm -hmm. um but do you uh oh did you uh roll with advantage oh advantage yeah you that's right laser that's right focused. so i i don't roll both again i roll one extra again or i do both again i believe you roll both again sweet okay that's how 22 it that's it there it is all right so for damage, that is nine total. Nine total. And this, what weapon is it again? It's a smart rifle. So smart rifle. yeah, 2d10 at nearby range. Nice. OK. And I'm sorry, you said the damage was again? Nine total. Nine total. All right. Um, and then go ahead and roll me uh, 1d10, please. Okay. That is a 1. Okay. Uh, yeah, this... Uh, the You blow a hole in it, uh, in its chest, and, like, more of this, like, black... What must be its blood begins, like, pouring out and is now bleeding badly. Uh, <sighs> it looks very badly hurt at this point. Um, and so, Marcy, you leap upon it, make a, a strength check uh, to try to grab onto this thing's tail. I'm trying to roll under my strength? That's right. Uh, 20, which is under. I have a 39 strength. 
Outstanding. Uh, yeah, you leap upon its back and grab onto the tail, and the tail's kind of like swinging now over your head, but you've got it in your, your hands. Um, and it's like trying to reach around and snap at you. Um, it's going to... Um, well, before we get to what it does, um, 33, are you, uh, did you want to do something active here? Uh, did I get the sense earlier where the, were the cables just atmospherically running through the skull or were they somehow connected to the skull? Uh, yeah, they're running through the skull. Okay. That's right. Um, and I didn't look at like though, what were those monitors displaying? Like I looked at the, I hooked mm. up the brain and took that code in. What were the other monitors displaying? Mm. The the other monitors are displaying um, what looks like uh, old footage from the ship, um, and it's it's pretty pretty grainy. And but it seems to be uh, sort of will go through and sort of show uh, like the same security footage um, kind of on repeat. Um, okay. And so you're seeing different people kind of die terrible ways, cool. <laughs> all different terrible ways. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um that's that's good for right now i take that in okay. for this uh this beat all right uh yeah so this thing is going to try to buck you off of it um marcy and so it's going to uh, make its own um uh, instinct check here which is not its strong suit uh rolls a 94 um just terrible, terrible. I, I'm notoriously a bad roller for NPCs. Uh, <laughs> that definitely is in your favor. Um, as it uh, fails utterly to uh, dislodge you from its back. Um, and so top of a new round, what's everyone doing? I'm going to try to um, snap the mm. tip off of the tail. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, if... It looks like Marcy's got everything under control. I'm not really sure what 33 is doing, but I think I just now realized that we're not back in the docking bay and we're in some kind of weird church thing, right, area? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you look um, around for the first time. Yeah, I look around for the first time like at, at my surroundings and I go, oh, we're, we're too exposed. So I think I'm going to put the rifle away, get up, and go into, like, defense mode and try to find any sort of way to like block the doors or something like that, like kind of defense our position. Okay. Very good. Um, and as you do that, um, Marcy's going to try to uh, snap the tip off of this tail uh, and go ahead and uh, make me another strength check. Six. Yeah. Six six nice you begin cracking it you feel like you feel it break you you and you rest it off um and so now you have like this this sharp um almost like scorpion like uh almost like the uh the the large uh, a large uh, fountain pen tip um that uh appears to be dripping uh, more of this um nasty liquid um the creature uh cries out um and uh, make a roll a, I think it would be another, um, like a D5. So two, a D10 divided by two. One. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it cries out in this nasty scream um, and tries to shake you off of it again. Oh, and this time it actually succeeds. Uh, as you are uh, thrown a few feet away from it, um, and it is going to... Um, in the next round, try to run away if it can. Um, and so do you want to try to do anything to stop it from running away? No. I'll let it run away. All right. Yeah. Arch, anything you want to do as it's uh, as this thing is like um, beginning, beginning to, to scuttle? Yeah, I mean, I was I was trying to block up the door. Is it running mm -hmm. toward yeah, me? Yeah, that's or is my it... question. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it uh, is it going towards me, or is it trying to go through like some vents or something? Yeah, you see that there is a there's a series of vents in the room, um, and so there's uh, that it seems to be wanting to climb up the wall and into its little um, hidey there. Okay, uh, kind of looking over my shoulder, I say. Quit playing with that thing and make sure it doesn't get away. <laughs> well, right. why can't it just? The point is, we didn't want it to get. We didn't want to get hurt. Now it's leaving. And just it's probably gone by then. <laughs> All 
All right. Yeah. So as you guys are debating whether or not to um, uh, to do anything, it's uh, going to yeah, it does uh, make its speed check and um, clambers up the wall with with terrible speed and dripping blood behind it uh, vanishes into the dark recesses of the air return. Yeah, and I'm just like, God damn it! Now that thing's gonna come back for us later. I'm gonna be looking over my shoulder all day. <laughs> We've got a trail of blood. We can just follow it. It's not, don't worry. It'll be fine. It's probably going to bleed out anyway. It'll be stuck in the vents. We'll never see it again. And anyway, I got this and I'll hold up the stinger. Hey, now look at that. This looks like it might be worth something. What do you think Doc can make out of this? 33, can you do some sort of analysis on this? 33 is like j -j 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 jacked into the computer. All fucking. Oh, okay, I'm not jacked yeah. in yet. That's just, that's yeah. coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I go, what in the hell are you doing here? Are you trying to make peace with God all of a sudden? I am unclear as to the point of this space. However, um, there is footage of additional crews boarding the, uh, the ship. Um, I've also located an interesting string of code. The, the footage is still playing on the screen, right? It is. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll start to pay attention to that. And uh, it, it looks like they're all totally different crews than the ones we've already seen. That's right. And in a ballpark, how many how many would you say are looping? Like three crews, a hundred crews? Um, I guess I'd put it this way: you don't see like the same crews like repeated. it just doesn't loop yet. Okay, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Getting a little chills. <laughs> Um, I do want to unplug the, the skull wires, <laughs> um, and I want to jack into the skull wire. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, yes. I love this. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, I think this is, it, would this uh, be an all right time to take a, a this little sounds break? sounds like a great time. Uh, also, I will point out sure. to anybody in the chat who's familiar with my character trips, I do feel like this is the Android equivalent of I put it in my mouth. Um, oh, yeah. And so oh, yeah. Um, we will be right back to find out what happens uh, when I put that code in my mouth and play some more <laughs> of this ship as a tune. Tomb in about five minutes. Awesome.
Just a reminder, while we are waiting, we have uh, some more streams coming up next week. We've got some games, some interviews. Uh, we will be doing part two of our most anticipated zines of Zine Quest 4. Uh, all that stuff coming up next week. However, on Monday, uh, I am very, very excited to have Keegan uh, EXE and Sarah uh, o, Sarah X Frank O, uh, come on uh, and do something that is certainly not a cult uh, on Monday night at 7 p.m. Uh, they will certainly not be starting a cult here on Plus One EXP. Uh, that's not going to happen. That's the only thing I know about what they're going to be doing, uh, but that's going to be August 22nd. That's Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and uh, come uh, come join us. Um, Keegan's been asking some really good questions like, what's the worst animal to sacrifice on a stream? Uh, what is everyone's favorite flavor of Kool-Aid? A lot of really, really good questions. It sounds like it's going to be shaping up to be uh, a very animal-friendly, um, Kool-Aid-driven party that has nothing to do with a cult um i've got the shopping list uh picked up the goat horned mask picked up the very nice robes um don't know what they need them for but not cult stuff uh come back join us on monday night for that And we are live again here on Plus One EXP playing This Ship is a Tomb. I oh, just took a little uh, break after some uh, combat with uh, what seemed to my character to be a very friendly uh, robot who just wanted to hug me with its brain. Uh, or robot <laughs> alien that just wanted to hug me with its brain. Um, but everybody else wanted to fight. That's fine. Uh, and I'm about to do the robot equivalent of putting something weird in my mouth. And so I'm going to hand things back over to uh, the creator, James Hanna, to take us back into the game. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, we left as 33B was going to uh, plug in uh, to this uh, to this uh, to the brain. Is that right? No, um, that's coming soon. Don't worry. Okay. And had we not had we not found another weirder cable, um, I would not have plugged into. The, I would be plugging into. The, I want to plug into the the skull wires the skull um, wires right right so so what does that what does that look like do you think um how are you how are you i don't have a belly yourself? button i have a port i mean like oh, what's good i mean it's a little bit private um but you know these these he's both of these fine folks have walked in on me um uh porting before and so they're they're familiar with it um mm -hmm. so yeah i stick i stick that that <laughs> that big skull wire in my belly button port all right um all right, let's. And, and uh, are you simply trying to? Is your goal to um, to access uh, like the the um, the data there, or? Yeah, I'm trying to interface with it, uh, mm -hmm. figure out what's going on here. Um, like it's intentionally showing us these images. It seems. I mean, like there's some intention in broadcasting these images here. So 
the computer equivalent of like trace it back to its source and figure out where the information is coming from and what other information is there. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, uh, make a hacking check. I think if, unless there's a, a, another check you have in mind, uh, there's not Uh 16. Okay. Very good. You, you are able to, uh, you, you access that information um, for a brief moment. You feel almost like an invasion within your mind of uh, another terrible vision. Um, and what that vision is, is you, you see your ship exploding and reforming and then exploding again uh, over and over. But that vision, you're able to push past whatever is kind of forcing that vision upon you. And you, you push through to the, the stream of data that you're, that you're looking for. Um, and you're, you are able to trace back that, the source of it, and you, you it's almost like you're um, running along the, the conduits of the ship itself, um, following the electrical feed uh, deeper and deeper into the ship, and you pass through the bridge and the computer terminals there. You uh, go down and through engineering and the drives and the reactors, uh, and then deeper still uh, into this other space. Uh, it's not like anything you've ever seen before. It's this massive um, spherical room. And at its center is this pulsing drive. Um, and this, you're sure, must be the sort of fabled uh, interdimensional dr drive uh, that the Advent Dawn was um, created to house. Um, and it's there that you see like this pulsing red energy um, and around the core, you see people um, standing, um, bowing to the to the core, um, almost worshiping it. Um, you, and you sense that this is where the it's coming from. Do the faces of any of the people seem familiar to the footage that we've seen? Uh, it, <laughs> yes, uh, yes. You definitely see uh, some of those some of those faces. Um, are are those of uh of crew's past uh excellent and then my other question is as i saw this repeating ship explosion process were the sh were the explosions the same every single time or did they differentiate at all mm. yeah it it seems to be it seems to be the same the same it exact almost, explosion every single yeah. time yeah okay. yeah yeah you're you kind of go over it with your android my, my, analysis yeah my my android brain mm -hmm. um Excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, and then I'll, I'll pour it out after that. That sounds fun. Okay. Um, do you want me to make any sort of sanity or any other type of? Yeah, check? do make a uh, yeah make a sanity save there for us, please. Uh, it seems seems like an appropriate one. I agree. And I'm so good at sanity checks. <laughs> What could happen? That's I, one of the best things. So I have a I have a digital roller, and one of the best things is I see each result in order. And so once I've hit the first one, the tens place is locked in, and it's always super. And you're like ah, it shit. really doesn't matter what the second one is. It can only get worse at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, that's an eighty-seven uh, on oh. the on the. So uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, that that stresses you out a little bit. As uh, yes, you add a add a stress, uh, but it's not quite enough to cause you to panic at this time. Okay. Um, I think I'm like cleaning off Marcy, all the goo that you can't get to. Yes, and <laughs> I, I grappling with this thing. I'm examining the the pincher. I mean the what is it called? The stinger. Stinger. The yeah. Stinger. I'm squeezing it. See if there's like things that come. Like, where's the poison come out? Is there poison? Is it just a weapon? Yeah, yeah. You you definitely. Uh, I, I guess I suppose if you had. Um, Xeno esotericism. This would be a perfect uh, place for that. Uh, for that one, uh, you could definitely make an intelligence check to see um, uh, what you can discern about this. Fourteen. I, that's okay. For me. Excellent. Um, yeah, you do find there is like there's clearly like a a a, a poison conduit um, for this thing, and there's there's some of that poison still in here, although. Uh, you suspect that um, most of the poison is probably housed somewhere else in the the thing's body. So, mm. it looks yeah, it looks like you might be able to get a sample from it at least. We let uh, the good stuff get away. Um, yeah, I wanna I wanna put the whole thing in something. 
and take it with me. I find I find another brain jar without a brain. In it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, because I'm not sharing my brain jar. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. You don't want to poison it. I'm sure we would have like you know some small sample collection things. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so you're able to to package that away for the time being. Um, I I put the skull. I I unloop the skull and I put it on the gurney with the brain. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm gonna ask what what you saw. Were you able to access anything in that there uh, skull of yours? Um, I was able to access the computer's network. Um, it does appear that the interdimensional drive is still active and that at least some crew members are still on board. Well, that's great news. Maybe we can uh, get a little reward for rescuing them. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps. I don't know much about this interdimensional drive you speak of, but uh, it seems to be a hot ticket item around here. Is it something we could carry with us? or? Um, I do not imagine so. It is larger than our ship's capacity. I see, I see. So we'll secure the asset and then we'll radio in, have somebody come and pick it up. That might be effective. Maybe we could tow it. <laughs> well, if it's bigger than our ship's capacity, I don't think it'll be uh, an easy tow. Oh, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> I mean, we could potentially use this ship to tow our ship. Yeah. Now, that's an idea. That's an idea. That's, that's cool. why I love having you on our team. You're a real thinker. <laughs> we, we might even be able to access the interdimensional drive in an attempt to pilot it wherever we want to go. Really? You can do that? I, I am unsure at this time, but we could always try. Well, if you can figure it out, I trust you. There's always a first time for everything. Um, <laughs> we're still trying to make it to the bridge, I think, theoretically, though. Now that, yeah, we, know, yeah, now yeah. that we know the drive exists, maybe that's the new plan of, of action. And so uh, I think well, we're you make it to the bridge. That's where you control the drive, right? Yeah, but I think the like the 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 uh, the crew was all down with the drive itself. Um, so yeah. perhaps we should we should engage them in a conversation about how we might most safely pilot it. Sounds like a plan. Um, so I think we're going to try to make our way down to where the drive is. Okay. All right. And so yeah, venturing out um, into the next uh, corridor. Uh, you, uh, it takes a, it takes a few minutes to find your way towards the next location. Uh, can someone roll a D10 for us, please? I think it's your turn, Tony. Got it. The six. Okay. And then one more D10, please. A seven. Okay. Okay. Uh, so making your way, uh, you find yourself in not in the drive location, but this does seem to be um, one of the sort of core locations of the ship, um, and you recognize it immediately, three uh, three B, as uh, the ship's mainframe. Uh, this is the this is where the central computer is housed, um, and uh, it, you see the, just blinking lights all around um, the. Uh, the ship with uh, with a little more juice than it had uh, when you first got on board um, does seem to have uh, awoken, um, you know, not literally, of course, but uh, um, does uh, there, there there's screens on there seem to be running some of that same um, same some of that same code um, that you saw earlier, and uh, and otherwise uh, yes, just uh, there's workstations and terminals here, um, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it's otherwise um, seems to be um, not empty um, because here also you find uh, evidence of uh, some some crew people. Um, you see uh, you see like the remains of um, what looks like food and old clothing. It almost looks like um, some people have been living here. Okay. Evidence of people, I told you. <laughs> well, this is all your uh, your dust you were talking about. That's what I said. 
I think you said the opposite, but that's all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm going to... I'm I'm gonna try to find a better interface for my brain in a jar uh, to try to talk to it uh, more. Um, I mean, since there's already some similar code floating across one of the some of the workstation screens, I'll move over to one of those and try to slave it back yeah. in, similar to the one in the way in the the way the one in the med station was set up. Hmm. Yeah, as you as you uh, set the brain down and begin to get to work, you you hear a voice um, from across the room. What are you doing there? What no. Uh, who goes there? <laughs> you see, uh, in the dark, you see someone who's, who looks extremely ragged. Um, their uh, their clothes are practically rotten to the point of falling off. Uh, they look filthy. Uh, and as you as you look at them, you also realize that their their skin has been uh, scarred in almost ritualistic ways. Um, okay. Uh, skin on like their eyes, mouth, and like face are all over. Or... Yeah, kind of all over their face. Yeah, and you see, yes, yeah, you see also uh, like patterns of cuts on their their hands. Um, again, in, into almost uh, like shapes or symbols. Mm -hmm. I think I get instinctually into a sort of defensive position, but I'm trying to like, you know, lure them out and be like. Come on out of there. Are you all right? You one of these crew members been missing? I am not missing. I am right where I belong. But you do not serve the ship. Serve the ship? What in the hell is he? Mercy, what is this guy talking about? Serve, serve. Is there a person here? Is there a, is this a military operation? Are you in command? There is only the dawn. Huh. Okay, he sounds like he's gone a little, ooh, ooh, if you know what I mean. One too many pain pills. The person begins to approach you. You see in their hand is a, a long knife. Hey, 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 back it up. I, I put up the crowbar. I sort of pointed at him and I go, back it up. We we don't want to hurt you. We've got some, we've got a, my, my man Arch here could really fuck you up. So we'll just yeah. back up. Yeah, he, he, he stops. Looks at you. He's looks over at thirty three B. Like, kind of like eyeing what you're connecting to. As if you, if you continue to plug in, you too will serve. <laughs> I've I've always lived to serve. I say as I like twist the last connection. <laughs> yeah. I so said, that's the good thing about these androids is uh, we know they serve us. <laughs> all arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. So uh, 33, let's have you um, make another hacking uh, check. Uh, 29. 29. And uh, were you trying to accomplish anything in particular this time? Uh, I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to re essentially reset up what was set up in the med bay to figure out what this was in the first place. And so, mm -hmm. uh, like looking at the code, I know figuring out is this a is this a are they trying to access the the brain's memories? Are they um, you know is it some sort of um, techno biological meshing unit that's in, designed to enhance computing power? Uh, is it some sort of bizarre cult? Whatever. Like I don't know, but um, that's what I'm trying to figure mm -hmm. out. Yeah, so uh, you you get the sense that this was an experiment, uh, and that this was an attempt to uh, create some sort of bridge between technology and flesh. Um, that the the purpose of this was to try to transmit information directly into human brains, um, mm. and it's not clear how successful that was, but. Um, but that is, yeah, you 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 get sort of that uh, all of that sense there. Cool, 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 cool. Well, there's only one way to find out, right? Yeah. Uh, and I jack myself into the system. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, and roll a d10 for me. Uh, that's a one. Okay. Wrong thing. The vision you experience this time 
as you take another stress, um, as this vision washes over you, is is the image of of Marcy and Arch, their bodies, almost Indiana Jones like uh, melting into pools of um, sort of liquid human, um, and forming together into an abominable creature of of sheer malevolent will. And it 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 it's jarring to sort of like pull yourself back from that vision and then to see them there standing before you. Again. Is it like superimposed in the environment we're at, or is it like somewhere else in the ship? I see this. Happening? Yeah, no, it feels like it's like, it's almost like, yeah, virtual reality. Okay, so um, for a second, I, it, to me, I, what I think has happened is I've jacked in and all of a sudden it has caused something to happen. And then I'd be able to pull back and realize that it's just a, um, exactly a simulacrum. Um, I'm going to continue to run this program while they and ex- poke around while they talk to this guy. All right. Cool. I oh, think I'm uh, just like <clears throat> Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say make a make a sanity safe there for me. Thirty-three. Excellent. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh close. Think... Close. Uh thirty one. Thirty one. Okay. Uh yep, you'll you'll add another stress. And I don't think you're quite at the point of panicking yet, but you certainly are are getting closer. Also point out this is the the most paced whether it's your GMing style, the way it's written, whatever, this is the best pacing on checks and rolls for sanity, fear, and body. And like my stress is higher than it's ever been in a game before. Nice. Um, but um the pacing on this is really good. Agreed. Um yeah, so I think I'm just in the mode of like trying to make sure this person stays calm. Um, and I think I'm also trying to lay it on thick, like, oh, you know, you're worshiping something like maybe we want to worship it too. If you want to serve, you know, we're here to serve. Why don't you show me where your friends are at and we can talk. Seems to regard you for a moment. You see the kind of regrips his knife. I bet you're real hungry. We got some food for you. The ship provides. Uh-huh. And he turns and, um, here, follow me. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Marcy, you ready to follow this man into the depths of this ship? Yeah, now I am. <laughs> All right. We'll probably have to wait until 33 is done. Are you are you out at this point? Do you think? Oh no, I was going to poke around so I get to roll the dice one more time and find out a little mm-hmm. bit more about this. So uh, it is no thirty three B is not done. Okay. So um, yeah, so we'll we'll stall a little bit, <laughs> waiting for him. Just tell me a little bit more about that star on the back of your hand. Uh, <laughs> yeah. what, what, should I roll another D ten? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it's a ten this time. Hey. Nice. You once again, sort of the the world itself uh, changes uh, to your vision <clears throat> as everything becomes red. Uh, sound becomes distorted, like it slows down, um, and it's almost as if everything is sort of awash in blood. And you sense for the first time the presence of something else within the ship not just like the usual artificial intelligence that would run a ship like this but but something else something not human not artificial intelligence but still part of the ship okay and so far the ai in this ship seems potentially somewhat subdued almost that's right that's right yes it's it's definitely not like interacting with you you know in the way that uh you would expect it to it's it's almost like it's dormant um or locked up somehow yeah um cool um i think yeah so i finished i'll finish poking around with the brain um uh, i think i'm gonna leave it set up here i think i think I, i want it to make sure it's in a good position now that the if it's operating here and everything seems to be copacetic um i am gonna go ahead and let whatever that code is into my system (laughs) though um 
Uh, you, whatever that means later on, we'll find out. Uh, but sure. yeah, then I'll, then I'll disconnect. Yeah, the uh, the last thing you get as you're you're uploading that code is you. It's almost like that 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 sense of what that whatever this other presence is. It's almost like its eyes turn to you right at the last moment, and you know that it knows that you're here. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Where are we headed somewhere? Yeah, our new friend here is gonna show us show us their their master of the ship. Keeper of the keys. Yeah. Ah, excellent. Yes, I'm very excited to meet them. And yes, the uh, the person will say, "All right." It is time, and they will um, disappear out another door, um, sort of expecting you to follow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to crack a chem light and drop it, like, in the doorway. Okay. The, um, the person leads you uh, down hallways, and um, they seem to have a, a sense of how to get around um, the... The next location uh, you come to is the um, is the bridge, however, mm -hmm. um, and the bridge is a, a massive um, area full of a, a large uh, window that you can uh, see out of, and um, of course a, a number of terminals and um, otherwise. Um, there's uh, there's only one. It seems like only one person, and and as you kind of enter the room, the the person like goes out another like there. He's somehow gotten ahead of you and is now like um, about to disappear across the room into another uh, corridor. Uh, but you the see that there's a following or somebody else. Yeah, it seems like the person you're following there. But then you see okay. that there's also a, a form sitting in the captain's chair. Okay, I think I. Probably give up halfway through trying to be like, hey, wait. Oh, fuck. He's gone. And there's a somebody sitting in the captain's chair? That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to clear my throat loudly. Oh, you're not going to get a response out of that thing. It looks dead. Oh, is it dead? I'll turn, I turn the chair around. You turn the chair around and you see that uh, the person um, does appear like their cheeks are sunken in. Um, their skin is, is almost ghost white, but most notably their eyes are gone, removed. They're just empty sockets now, but they look up to you. Like they move? Mm -hmm, yeah, they, they move and look right at you, even though they have no eyes. Their, their mouth opens. And a low moan begins to emit. Oh, as they reach out a hand towards you. I stumble backwards away from them. All right. Yeah, make a, make a fear check. Fear check? How yeah. do I do that? To a D100 and trying to get under your um, fears or fear save. Oh. Yeah. oh, so close. I did not make it 16. Okay. Um, so, yes, you will uh, take a stress, take one stress as this, this form rises up out of the chair and begins to move towards you. What are you guys doing? I'm just I mean, back, back. I'm, I'm totally just like trying to get away from it. Yeah, hear, hearing that low moan, I think would definitely get our attention. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm just drawing my, my weapon and trying to see what it's going to do. Please sit down. You, <laughs> I do not believe you're able to see or navigate the space safely. We can assist you. <laughs> I can you tell see. Them she shows me everything and uh it's going to continue towards you marcy 
um, and is going to looks like um, wants to uh, grab a hold of you. Um, yeah. is, is definitely going to unless you guys unless someone do, does something. Um, I'll interpose. I'm gonna just try to body check this guy kind of gently, but like, like in the sense of I'm medically concerned for this individual. But I am also going yeah. to recognize it's going to take force to get them to do what I want. So I'm going to basically put my myself between Marcy and him and basically kind of shove him back into the chair. All right. Yeah. And I'm just like, you say the word and I'll light him up. All right. Sounds like you are making a, a strength check there. Yeah. 33. What happens when you match your number? Is that a success? I believe that's a success. Yeah. Okay. Then, that's I success. then I succeed. Match or under, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, just kind of body into him and the this person falls back against into the chair uh you've already seen the the person looks over to you 33 and looks right at you you've already seen she knows you're here yes what's he talking about 33 seen what um the the ship is aware of our presence oh well i figured it would be artificial intelligence these days um <laughs> i just want to give him like a little blast with the foam gun uh mm. not to i, I, to I, the I know there's day but i just want to stick him to the chair basically gotcha. yeah sure uh yeah make a make a combat check um the person seems to be they're kind of beginning to rise back up out of the chair here um that's an 88 <laughs> okay <laughs> uh let's see i wonder what bad thing happens here um could be the the gun doesn't uh work as intended um could be you um i don't know if this is intended to be a combat if it's not i was certainly not trying to hurt or kill this guy gotcha, um, yeah yeah and so damaging <clears throat> him could be what happens um mm -hmm. sticking myself to the chair, the chair <laughs> also feels very good Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that was, I was thinking that too. Yeah. You sort of stick, either you stick yourself or maybe you stick like it actually like goes over his face and like, rather than stick him to the chair, it's um, yeah. It's a more terminal situation. Uh, that feels horrific uh, and great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right at the last moment um, your, your foam gun kind of goes up and, and just covers his face. And for a moment, struggles yeah, against 33 it. got excited again <laughs> uh, this was this was not my intent i apologize um i i um i am i think i'm actually gonna make uh i may make a fear check here I, that i don't i sure. probably won't fail it but um yeah and you'll you'll definitely uh yeah i'd say take a take a stress yeah. and uh yeah since that was a critical failure yeah, um, I didn't fail my fear check, but yeah, I think stress is appropriate because like this is kind of my worst nightmare of, oh man, I just hurt. I absolutely am suffocating this guy to death now uh, <laughs> for for no good reason. Yeah, so do you want to um, try to uh, try to save him? <laughs> I don't have anything I can use to save <laughs> this guy on me. Does anyone have a knife? No. Uh yeah, yeah. Assorted tools might have a knife. Here. Yeah, yeah. I've certainly got. I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to cut a breathing hole for this guy. <laughs> all right, all right. What could go wrong? Um, let's see. What do we think that would be? Hmm. Maybe an intellect check, just because you're trying to use sort of your knowledge of, um, your knowledge to kind of do this. I think. Okay maybe there's a skill you could apply uh there's not uh okay. <laughs> not unless mathematics is gonna help uh that's a uh that is a 61 which um is a two over my intellect okay you begin carving away at the at the foam um and you're you feel like you're getting close um and then you carve what must be some of the person's nose off and blood begins to fill the, the foam and it's now like kind of gushing. The person's struggling even more now. They still can't breathe. I'm sure the blood leaking back into their tracheal is probably totally helpful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, I 
do not think um, that I can be of any further assistance here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, f I feel like this might be an appropriate uh, time for a, a, a panic check for you. Uh, um, I'm, that sounds great. <laughs> uh, uh, 13, I'm fine. Okay, very good. Uh, should I take another stress? Uh, yes, go ahead and add a stress for that failed check. And just so you know, we are getting some kind of intense storms coming through here. So it's, we usually don't lose power, but if I suddenly go dark, that's what's happened. For sure. Excellent. Um, yeah. So, um, also I, I said this in chat, I have never done anything this horrific to anyone on stream ever before. Uh, and I love it. That's great. That's great. All right. <laughs> The uh, yeah, I don't think it, unless um, Archer or Marcy wants to try to do something, uh, the person's going to um, cease struggling here momentarily. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really have anything I can do, and I thought this dude was dead already. Um, Thirty-three, you're stuck. I'm not stuck. No, you're not stuck. Okay, okay, good. So if you're not in trouble, I'm not worried. <laughs> Same. I, I'm fine with him dying in the chair. <laughs> That's okay with me. Yeah, he's uh, a lost cause. And indeed, uh, they do seem to be a lost cause as their their violent reactions begin to cease and finally cease altogether. I say, attaboy, 33, you got him to calm down just fine. Um, a little messy, though. I uh, I also do need somebody to, to note after the guy's body finishes shaking as he asphyxiates, what horribly inappropriate song at that moment chooses to click in on my walk. <laughs> so Chad, if you want to take care of some yes. suggestions there for me, feel free to toss them in. Uh, there you go. Um, it's true. In sci-fi, every bot eventually becomes a murder bot. Um, they might unbecome a murder bot later, but they do eventually become a murder bot. Um, uh, I, um, uh, yeah, I gotta think I just gotta stand there in shock and like I'm quietly apologizing under my breath. Um, and <laughs> yakety sax all of a sudden kicks in over the yeah, that's the like one of your finish. favorites, too. Um, <laughs> amazing. Uh, the uh, yeah, um, it takes a couple seconds, like. I like that all of a sudden unnatural calm kind of comes over my face. Um, <laughs> perhaps we should check the navigational system. Absolutely. We made it to the bridge and you said you might be able to uh, tap in here and figure out how to get us home with this whole ship and kit and caboodle. Yes. If there's appropriate power, we might be able to access the drive. Well, good thing we just juiced her up earlier, huh? Yes. I'm just kind of looking down at this foam pile of blood and limbs, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not, not how I would have done it. <laughs> go check the computer bay. <laughs> so you're checking the getting uh, logging into the computer here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and so are you uh, trying to like uh, take control and like drive this thing, or you, you were talking about um, like uh, accessing the jump drive as well? Yeah, that the intent was if we could get this back to civilization, it's probably worth a whole mm -hmm. lot of money. And what could go wrong if it had access to a whole bunch of people? Nothing. And so, uh, yeah. So I'm just I'm pulling up navigational and uh, like the piloting command system and seeing the state Great. of things. Yeah, and and you're you're definitely able to to do that. Um, it is a, a ship system that uh, you know you're you are a, you've done some flying yourself and you certainly know how to how to ac access these uh, pretty basic systems um, and and the ship does seem uh, maneuverable and, and flyable um, and so yeah you can uh, you could certainly begin to um, to fly her um, towards some destination yeah I'll punch in whatever we consider home base um, making sure our ship is docked for you know faster travel. Uh, while also investigating if we can access the drive from the bridge, like mm -hmm. the, the interdimensional drive. Right. Yeah. So you, um, yeah, are able to uh, kind of secure your vessel, uh, get the uh, locking clamps engaged so that uh, it can move without uh, damaging your ship. Um, when you go to access the interdimensional drive, uh, uh, 
Go ahead and uh, roll a um, a roll a d10, please. One. Okay. Uh, you once again get that that vision of your ship uh, exploding and reforming and exploding again. This time it's it is uh, different than the first um, vision. Um, but it's the same feeling. Uh, and as that's happening, uh, you get the same sensation of being watched from within the ship. Um, and your, your vision is transported again to that jump to the drum drive. Uh, and you see again, these, uh, the image of these people, uh, standing around it. Can I make out anything they're saying? Uh, no, you can definitely, you, you, you sense that there's, um, they are saying something and they seem to be saying something almost in unison. Can I, it's this the is, Cheers theme song. Can I, I'm going to try to robot brain this. Um, uh, if I can make out their lips, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to, uh, how lip read them. Uh, and then. Like, I think, like, almost unconsciously say whatever they are saying out mm. loud. If if, right. if that works. If not, I'll, and sure, I'm, yeah. that feels like absolutely some sort of intelligence check, probably. Yes, I'd agree with that. Uh, yep. Does linguistics help me here? Sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah. All right, 17. Okay, very good. Yeah, the, the speech is unlike any language you've heard, but you are able to, with your linguistic skill, uh, piece together the sounds that they're making, following their lips, looking at their their mouths and, and lips move. Um, and you begin to uh, either audibly or not, um, whichever you think is appropriate, uh, mouth those same words. And um, Marcy and Arch, I think you see 33's mouth moving and whether or not you I think hear it, something. I think it like starts silently in the view of the camera and then there's like a light mumbling and then like whenever I figure it out it's just like very, very loud set out to yeah just suddenly room. projected okay <laughs> and it, it almost seems like I mean I I don't know if any of you would have a reason to maybe know um like ancient Latin but uh yeah. no. <laughs> I just assume it's some weird robot shit. I'm like, <laughs> as well, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what in the hell? If I'm trying to interrupt you, you're still just going, right? Um. Once I say it out loud, I think I stop. Like after oh, okay. I, after I think I figured it. Like I say it out loud very loudly, uh, then I mm -hmm. think I stop. <laughs> mm. Okay. I love that. Well, and I'll ask like, you all. Like, what was all that? Oh, I was trying different command code sequences. Anything work? Um, I am unsure at this point. Can do, you, I see, can you... do I see anything happen like yeah. uh, on the ship? Do I see any sort of response from the ship? Um, so in in trying to access the jump drive, you you only get a um, uh, a fail uh, alert. Okay. Yep. Um, it seems we okay. might have to access the drive directly, but as I said. I believe there is more crew there that might be able to help us. That's what I was worried about. If there's more crew like Sneaky Fingers over here or, uh, you know, Foam Man, I'm not I'm not looking too forward to meeting them. I, I would just like to point out that I was right, that this dust was from people. I just would like to everyone to acknowledge that. Most dust is from people. You are correct. Yes. Yeah, 95%, I think you said. 95% right. of people eventually become dust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, th 33, any, any way you could uh, translate uh, what you said so we could understand it in our language? Um, I mean, I do have linguistics. Do I know what I said? Uh, you get the sense that it is, um, it seems to be a kind of uh, a prayer. Um, okay. Yes, to uh, the, the word doesn't come across, but... Um, whether it's a name or some kind of uh, entity, but uh, some sort of uh, almost a, almost like a prayer. Uh, to, it, to it, something. Is it is it a it is it is is it classic Latin English or was it? Yeah, yeah, like classic, classic Latin. Latin. Is it, was it classic? 
uh, Terran Latin. Wasn't Terran Latin. Latin. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it English Latin? Is that the thing? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the um, it was a piece of old Latin, a, an offering to higher powers for luck. It did not seem to have had an effect. Huh. Like those old serenity chants they teach you when you're a kid? When you were a Something kid. like that, yes. I, I, the royal you, not, <laughs> not not 33B specifically. Uh, that that other uh, person was talking about worshiping the the dawn or something. Yeah, it's the name of the ship. They were saying something about how the ship provides. I don't know what they're talking about, but it seems a little cuckoo to me. Yes, it seems that the crew of this ship has a particularly religious bent. Yeah, well. They're worshiping the AI? They are not worshiping the AI. What do you think they're worshiping? It is unclear. They called it a she, a mother. A mother ship? How interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Well, I guess the, the only thing left to do is uh, find these... These crew members and get us the hell out of here. Yes, we are currently crowd. back on route for home. It will take however long it's going to take for us to get there. Yeah, 374 <laughs> light years. <laughs> yeah, a long time. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, and so are you wanting to uh, to keep moving here? Yeah. Okay. Assuming there's no one on the bridge that yeah. we could accidentally kill again. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No one else. All right. And so, uh, making your way uh, deeper into uh, the ship, let me get a, a D10 roll from someone, please. Go ahead, B. You're next. Rolling what again? A D10. Five. Okay. On your way uh, to that, uh, to the next location, you... Uh, before you enter it, you you do see that you are now um, outside the um, the drive chamber. Um, but outside the drive chamber, there is uh, a lift, um, and you haven't seen any of these lifts um, to speak of. This is the first one, um, but uh, it seems to uh, it it says like on it, uh, central lift to uh, docking ring. Just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen them because this is the I, like this is the only one on the that's possible to come across, or like there are other ones and we just haven't bumped into them. Um, so this they are they are rare, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. But, so I mean, it, my it, character it, saw a map of the ship, so like as a player, I feel justified in asking. Like, oh yeah, totally. Are, there totally. are other lifts; they're just not very common. Gotcha. Okay, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you could have bumped into one, but cool. Um, the um. Uh, I believe the drive, drive is this way. <laughs> oh, you're always full of surprises. Um, it's great to, to have an Android on the team. Try, try to operate the lift. Yeah, sure. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, the uh, the the lift is going to take you um, back to the uh, back to your ship. In fact, if you wish to take it. And so, yeah, so the, you basically got, uh, you're at a, a, a sort of a fork. You can take the lift back to your ship or there's the, uh, the, the drive chambers, uh, in front of you. Got you. Mm -hmm. Would you like to return to our ship or we can proceed to the drive? Well, I'm, I don't think we, 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 we gotta figure out what's going on here. We can't just leave. I concur. And, I, and, and I'm sure Arch is just. If Arch, if Arch would stop smoking a cigarette for a moment, then we would know. I can tell they're smoking. He, he's just sucking on that cancer stick so hard. Sorry, I'm back. They're real short ones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think heading to the drive is the perfect solution. Excellent. Apparently, all that's right. what we're all in on. Yep. 
And so you uh, you enter this cavernous space. Um, it is dominated by a cylindrical mass of coiled conductors. A uh, warbled thrumming emanates from this central pillar. Um, the walls of the spherical room continue to shift in these strange geometric patterns. And uh, you recognize the patterns as being those same that were carved into the crewman, crewman skin. Uh, you see that there's uh, there's light high up in the the room, and there's it, it, it sends shadows sprawling across every surface. Um, there is strangely no dust, no dirt, no grime anywhere in this room. It is pristine. Um, the core's strange whirring as each of you uh, enter. Um, you'll make a, a sanity save as the, the the ship's strangeness manifests. For all of us, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I have a question. Only because I've seen this repeatedly already. Mm -hmm. Do I need to make the sanity check? Uh, no, I'd say that's, yeah, that's fair. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you have seen this, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have made sanity checks for this visual. Right. Multiple right. times. A yeah. Like a couple. I just want to make sure. Yeah. And so. Yeah. And yet it is uh, a, for the first time type thing. Yep. I got a 63 failure. Okay. All right. Add a stress. Mm -hmm. So I got four total now. Okay. Oh, wait. You're, we roll a percentage die? That's right. Percentage yeah. die. Trying to roll under your oh. sanity. Fuck. 52. Okay. Add a stress. The the strangeness of this room makes you feel uneasy. Mm hmm And I'm gripping my gun tighter. Breathing into my oxygen. Mm hmm Uh let's see. Uh so both of you who failed, um, roll me one more D10 as you begin to experience the same sorts of terrible visions that 33 did two five okay arch you see your yourself and uh marcy both um your forms um and even perhaps more disturbingly 33 um their uh non-biological forms melting down and reforming with the biological becoming an almost like technological biological abomination mm-hmm um Some Acura stuff. Yes, yes. Um and Marcy, you sense that like in every shadow around you, you see something lurking. It's it's there just right at the edge of your vision. And when you turn to look at it, it's there's nothing there. But then you sense it again in another shadow, and you just you just are haunted by this this sense of of being watched of of being stalked from the shadows but after a moment the 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 sense leaves you and you realize that no it's just it's just these strange moving shadows i think i immediately take a pain pill after shaking the vision off okay i have a mechanical effect it reduces one stress and gives 1d10 health, but I have full health, so cool. Just reducing yeah. one stress. There you go. Feel your symptoms calm a little. Mm -hmm. What were you saying, B? I said, I just said, uh, I don't like it in here. I'm not getting a good feeling about this. I understand that new types of technology can be overwhelming, but I believe the crew can help us here. Yeah, it looks like they're already, uh, you know, we're working with this uh, pretty closely. And indeed, you uh, you hear now the voices of the crew, and looking up, you see there's like a catwalk kind of a, a, mm -hmm. above you, and you see them, um, a number of people, almost a dozen, uh, encircling the central pillar, um, and mm -hmm. you hear their voices. Um, saying those str same strange words you heard 33 utter moments ago. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're trying to figure out the code too. Should we interrupt them or is that a bad idea? Um, I don't want my face to melt off like... 
Uh, I am happy to interface with them. <laughs> All right, well, I, you lead the way. You're the one that speaks their weird language. How do I get up to the catwalk? Yeah, you see um, that there is, um, off on one of the sides, uh, there's a, a, a spiraling ladder that leads up um, towards that catwalk. Cool. Yeah, that sounds mm -hmm. like a great way to get up there. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and head closer towards the center here and just get an eye on the catwalk from underneath. Mm -hmm. Marcy, what are you doing? I'm gonna hang back and look out in the shadows, make sure nothing is actually gonna come out from them. Okay. All right, keeping your eye on the, the shadows there. Uh, so 33, you make your way up the uh, the stairs, uh, your footsteps ringing out on the in this large space, um, your grav boots on these metal stairs. Um, as you get up uh, to the top of the catwalk, you see um, the people um, encircling it. You sense stronger than ever the presence within this ship. Cool. Is that something that we would pick up on too, or? Yeah, I think you are definitely beginning to feel it as well. It's almost like it—it it, it is more of that sense of being watched. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, as I draw close, I think I just start like I. We see like my mouth start like moving in unison <laughs> with the chant mm. uh, of everybody else. Um, and I'm actually, I think, going to almost just move into position with them and see how they respond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you see that they, each of them adjusts to make space for you and kind of equal out the circle again. Kind of nudge Marcy. Looks like he already earned their trust. Maybe he can divert this thing after all. Maybe he can. If anyone can, it would be him. <laughs> Don't worry, though. I'm keeping an eye on these strange crew members. Any one of them makes a move, it's go time. I, I got your back with this crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that dog's still running around here somewhere. You keep an eye out. That's what I'm doing. Um. I feel like, so they don't respond at all other than to let me in and make space for me. That's right, yeah. <sighs> Trying to think about how 33B would be taking all of this in, because he has no, he actually does not have the religious context at all. Like he, I mean, he's been exposed obviously through injury to it, but um, do I think this is a, like, are they powering the drive up? Mm. What is what is the mechanical or engineering analog that I perceive this to be? Or I yeah. guess I've taken it in in his computer programming language. What is what is what's what is this sequence attempting to do? Mm. Uh, it's not clear. In fact, the longer you remain there, the more you get the sense that it's that it has no mechanical purpose. That it is simply the thing that they feel they must do. But I don't necessarily feel that compulsion, correct? That's correct, yeah. You're getting the sense that you're just like, are you people just faking it? You're like, this <laughs> right. isn't doing anything. <laughs> right. Do they all look, other than being different faces that I've seen from, uh, do I, is there any anybody I see in here, somebody who obviously had died on any of the screens? Mm. Uh I don't think so. There, yeah. there were people who were definitely like you saw bad things happening too, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, but they still and they see, still seem to be bearing whatever those bad things were as might be exactly. Before. Yep. Um, does anybody appear to be in charge? Like, is there somebody who seems to be not in particular? Yeah. Um, I'm going to grab the person on my left, mm -hmm. and I'm going to throw them off the catwalk. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so um, let's have you make a, a strength check. I say, it's on! <laughs> uh, 39? I don't think that is a success. So nope. 
you 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 do grab the person um shoving them up against the rail you're not quite able to um push them over the side at this moment the the chanting stops um and the the room goes dark um it's mm. still like there's still like emergency lights overhead it's not completely black but um the room grows dark and um the uh as one the 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 people who are there um begin uh screaming at you uh, and uh they, they are going to uh, try to rush you so oh, fuck this <laughs> I, I i pull my gun up and i'm i'm gonna start running up the stairs all right uh marcy what are you doing i just got a literal cold rush when that happened and that i was like what the fuck <laughs> um so uh what do i do yeah. uh, i crawl from the guy <laughs> 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 amazing um and um 33 um uh, are you going to try to complete this uh um not quite a defenestration but uh um yeah try to yeah yeah mm -hmm. i mean i was just curious what was going to happen uh i mean i've gotten some data now that's important that <laughs> yeah, you're learning that is always important that's right um, that's right but yeah i'm going to try to push this guy over one more time all right, uh, go ahead and make a strength check. And then um, the two of you who are rushing up the stairs, make a speed check for me. Nine. Mm, nice. That was a fail. I got a 61. Okay. Uh, it'll be add one stress. Okay. Um, two, yeah, 2D10s. Two 2D10s. Two oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Did you roll the nine on two d tens? No, I, I, well, yeah, two d tens, not a percentage. Yeah, we're doing percentage. Yeah, yeah percentage. Oh. So oh. one is one. You can use a d hundred if you have one. Um, mm -hmm. but it's it's yeah. One is the tens place. One is the the ones place. Ones place. Okay, ninety six. Ooh. Okay. All right. You'll, so you'll take a, a stress <laughs> as well. Yeah, and you're not quite able to make it up uh, to the top of the stairs um, this round as. Um, and then uh, 33, did you make your... I did uh, this time, yeah. Okay, great. Um, the This uh, person goes flying over. Their body lands at the bottom, uh, crumpled into a, a bloody mess uh, as it breaks on the uh, metal below. Uh, the rest of the people come in and rush you. Um, they, they're trying to stab you with uh, various cruel blades. Um, so I'll just roll a couple of uh, checks here. Let's see if they can. No, that's 73. 86. My God. Okay, I've got to use a different die here. <laughs> 14. All right. Okay. <laughs> one, of, one of them finally um, makes contact with you, um, and they'll do um, uh, seven, uh, seven, hit point, seven hits of damage. Wow. Or seven health, rather. And uh, yeah, okay. So we're um, back up to a new round here as uh, 33 is completely surrounded. Um, and mm -hmm. it looks like they may try to uh, do what um, he did to one of theirs um, yeah. if, uh, if you can't uh, stop him. And uh, yeah, what are, you, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm just screaming like, you know, Hold on, 33, we'll be right there. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is try to, if, if there's any sort of positioning where I could use my mag boots to run on the wall or something and get a good mm. a good aim, I'd like to try and do something like that um, and then just aim and fire. Okay, I love it. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, yep. And then, uh, Marcy, what are you going to do? I'm going to head toward where 33 is and just try to be pushing people off in my way mm -hmm. um, to hopefully get some of the heat off of 33 onto me. Okay. And so, yeah, it's, it sounds like that'll be a strength check. And, and 33, what are you doing? Um... Don't do the self-destruct yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't think about riding that guy down earlier. Um, I think I'm actually just looking over the edge. Like, I think I'm almost like, I know I just got stabbed, but like, I think we saw me push this guy over and I'm like watching this guy's body. 
that mm. that went down just to see what happens. Um, and so I am largely defenseless and unaware. So I'm I don't I'm not doing the self destruct, but I am I do want to know what, if anything happens to this body after it's hit the ground. All right. Okay. Got you. Um, so a, a combat check from for you, Arch, and a strength mm -hmm. check for you, Marcy, as you attempt to body these bodies off of your buddy. <laughs> Eighty-two yeah. on strength. Mine was a success, 25 under 50. Okay. Nice. Um, so Marcy had a stress. Um, uh, it's not time to panic yet, but, um, and then uh, roll uh, roll your damage, um, Arch. Mm -hmm. That's going to be, uh, would you say this is long range since I didn't get my speed check? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Okay. So it's just one wound at long range. Okay. Yeah. So in fact, you uh, you shoot one of them and they just drop. Um, they are unarmored and, um, yeah, not, Sweet. no, don't seem to, be, seem to be the stoutest, but there's still quite a few of them. Um, yeah. getting ready to shoot again. All right, Marcy, you're, you're just not quite able to push through They're They're completely, um, engulfing, uh, 33 who, as you look down, um, and see the, uh, the form, um, you watch as the first, a finger twitches, and then the hand moves, presses down on the ground, and begins to rise back up, um, bloody and broken, but still somehow moving. Gross. Cool. Perfect. Exactly and uh, yeah, go ahead and yeah, make a, a, a fear save as you witness the reanimation of the corpse. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so... Uh, Arch, you still still shooting? Yep, I'm just gonna hold my ground and keep shooting. Okay, combat. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's an eight. Yeah, so all another, right, another wound. Yeah, all right, and you drop another one. Uh, Marcy, what are you up to? Um, all I have is my close quarters combat, so I'm just gonna keep trying to push through. Okay, yeah. Do you would you want? Are you trying to like swing your weapon this time? Yeah, my my crowbar. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. This is, uh, yeah, a combat check, but with uh, so take your combat and add uh, your close quarters combat, and then you'll roll the percentile. Uh, close quarters is a plus ten, right? I think so. Yeah, where do I see? It's under your skills there. Oh, it's, it's up a, at the top. Oh, actually, it's a level one or a level two or a level three skill. It is a level two, so oh, okay, so plus fifteen. Plus fifteen. Okay, so um. 51 plus 50, 60. I don't know. So you're going to, whatever your number to roll under combat. is, is going to go, it's going gonna, it's gonna to raise that number up. So what's mm -hmm. your roll under number for combat? 31. So you're going to add 15 to that. So it's going to go up to being 46, and the goal is to roll under yeah. a 46 or more. Well, well, we make it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Someone, I think someone like grabs your arm as you're trying to bring yeah. it down. Um, and uh, they, they turn to face you, and you see that, um, like the, person you met on the bridge their eyes are hollowed out um their their mouth is uh just a mess of like rotten teeth and bloody gums i say i'm i, I surrender i'm on a warship <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, through with the this rancid breath breathing hot in your face it, everyone must serve I will serve. I'm serving. <laughs> and um, yeah, let's. Um, I'll have you make a um, uh, a, a fear check as. Um, as okay, what I call that? Uh, so that'll be a fear save. Excuse me. So that's a. Um, oh. A, yep. Uh, another percentile trying to roll oh. under your fear. No, ninety two. <laughs> Okay, uh -oh. that's all right. Add a stress as the situation is uh, not not looking great, but not panicking yet. And so, what uh, what is everyone doing this round? Here? Are the are the two that I dropped still down? Cool. Um, yeah, so they, they are down, um, but uh, but you do see them um, stirring. And actually, uh -huh. I forgot to have the um, these other people act here. Um, this time, they're going to try to make a. Um, you're going to try to heave 33 um, over the railing here. That's fine. Uh -huh. All right. I deserve it for what I did. 
<laughs> they this time they rolled a nine. Um, and so they nice. yeah, clearly like just tall. You see 33's body fly through the air, um, falls the Can, the can I make so a feet. body save to try to pull one of them with me? Sure. Yeah, I love that. There you go. It's just like monkeys in a barrel. They all keep grabbing onto yeah. the next guy. <laughs> Didn't happen. Okay. Grasping out at the last moment, you you try, but um, can't quite pull them with you um, as you um, as you fall the the fifty feet down onto the to the metal uh, floor below. Um, I don't know how fall damage works. Uh, do we want me to just take a wound? Does that? Sound I think good? that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So roll a d10 to see the kind of wound it would be. Um, eight. Eight. You said. Yep. Oh, your uh, your skull cracks hard on the on the uh, the metal floor. Um, the 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 milky white liquid that is your sort of um, blood um, seeps out of it, covering your face and clothing. Excellent. Any ongoing mechanical issues, or just uh, just that? Uh, no, just that. Sure. Yeah, one one more one higher. On a nine, that would have been uh, you. You you have died. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, jeez. Oh, um, it's an okay point for that in the stream. Also, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. True, it's true. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I just yell out like, "Marcy, extract yourself." Mm. And I, I'm, I'm like trying to approximate what I heard thirty three saying in Latin. Mm, okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. Yeah, make a make an intellect um, uh, check and a six seven. Fifty seven. Oh, fifty seven. Is it? Does that succeed for you? No, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Add a stress as um, <laughs> they uh, begin uh, surrounding you, and um, that they uh, they sort of laugh a little bit and mock you um and they begin uttering the words but like correctly um and all around you um they are um they are threatening to uh to to stab you or worse um, when you don't know the hymn and you're just, <laughs> <laughs> you're just trying to lip sync along lip syncing a little bit yeah <laughs> all right the situation's getting a little dire yeah what i think i'm 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 like, come on, come on, like tapping the the HED, trying to get it to work, and I'm I'm scanning the room for, for any any idea of whether or not this drive has uh, a weak point. I guess I, I'm considering mm. shooting it. I'm okay. like, they're they're standing around this thing. What happens when I shoot it? Hopefully, it'll distract the group. Yeah, I mean, you you certainly sense that. Um... I mean, it is a mechanical component. Uh, it is uh, certainly specialized technology. Probably doesn't want to get shot. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You think, I think yeah, it's my only option. I'm like, either we're all going to die here, or I'm going to try and pull pull their attention. Uh, good. That's a forty. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, you do shoot it, and then immediately um, the the room like lights up with this red um energy um as uh first the the, the drive itself seems to kind of like darken but then poof, this blast mm -hmm. of of energy it doesn't it doesn't harm you but um the the room is suddenly aglow in this this red um light um mm -hmm. the the people See, there's more of that where that came from yeah the people around marcy suddenly like turn towards you and no and they, uh, they, they're now like not paying attention to you, Marcy, but they are definitely like, um, they're definitely looking at you, Arch. Um, mm -hmm. But you also All up hear... on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they'd like to. Uh, you don't think yeah. they can quite get to you there, but um, but then you hear um, these metal footsteps uh, ringing out, like heavy, large. Sounds like this thing is is massive, and coming mm -hmm. through the door. Um, is something out of only a nightmare. It's it's part person, part forklift. 
it's oh, rather than rather than legs it, it's it is somehow strapped to its human torso um these fork lift fork loader legs that that propel it through um and two weak arms uh kind of like move the propel the thing forward um but it um it comes in and immediately kind of scans the room with these uh with this strange cybernetic visor um <laughs> it's it, even its guts have have been removed and are now placed there there's just this strange red ball of of metal and it it turns towards you and you be, you see it begins to like like plants one leg into the the wall and like begins trying to like come up the wall towards you um, oh god <laughs> yeah so just like taking very slow steps like up the wall even higher like uh this is a problem this is a problem this is a problem <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's gonna try to reach you. Um, yeah, what are you? What are you doing? Uh, Thirty three. You're you're down. Uh, yeah, so I think I start pulling myself back up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this thing coming in. Um, I I want to go over to this body that's slowly healing itself and coming back next to me. Um, and I want to take my port, and I'm gonna need a song here in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, chat, so just get ready. Uh, I want to pull out my my port. And I want to stick it into this guy's brain. <laughs> and I want to broadcast the code that I downloaded earlier through it. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. All right. Um, so I think as you do that, um, I think that's pretty, pretty horrifying. So maybe either a sanity or a fear uh save just as you as you're doing this this terrible thing i mean fear is stakesless largely for an android so let's make Fair it enough. sanity because i also feel like this is pushing against kind of what i've established as the core nature of what what i mm -hmm. like to do Fair. um yeah i was not successful also too, so. okay all right um and so i won't you won't make a panic check yet but do add a stress as yep. Um, as you plug into this person's, um, their head, which is like cracked open, sort of almost gruesomely, grimly, a uh, parallel to the crack in your own head, um, right now, uh, which is still just kind of streaming, um, streaming blood and, uh, jacking in, um, the, you, so you're like you're downloading the code to or, or I'm broadcasting. To... I I mm -hmm. don't know if I have if I have taken this in right as a character or as a player. Uh, I'm attempting to interface my brain with his brain, mm -hmm. and the only hope that I can kind of have right now is: does this code allow me to override whatever is happening to him? or interface with his brain directly in some way, shape, or form. Those are the only two things my character can think of, to, or that I as a player can think of for my character to do at this moment that is interesting yeah, that's to, cool. to poke around with. <laughs> yeah, make a make a hacking check um, to see how successfully you can. Um, You're like seeing through both sets of eyes for a moment. Right. Um, uh, what kind of check am I making? Uh, hacking. Hacking. Uh, yeah, we're fine. All right. Um, as you as you jack into this person, they um, you you experience it, it's almost like trend. You're you're kind of passing back and forth information, and you experience the the all the terrible things that this person experienced while aboard this ship, and you you see sort of like the the ritualistic um, uh, process that they each of them have gone through the the, the suffering and the the pain. Um, and you, you sort of, uh, and you'll, you'll take an, another stress as you, uh, feel all of that, but also you're able to, uh, download, um, this sort of interface to them and it does, uh, sort of cut off, seems to cut off whatever, um, resuscitation was going on and the body drops back cool. to the floor. Sweet. All I have to do. <laughs> to disrupt this is take two stress every single time. <laughs> uh, great. Right. Perfect. Yeah. That was fun. 
Yeah. So this uh, this cybernetic cyborg monstrosity is now entered the room and is about mm-hmm. to scamper up the wall towards you. Um, Marcy, you're um, sort of not, not entangled by these people, but um, there's still a bunch of them around. Um, what are you a momentary doing? break. <laughs> yeah, I used the opportunity for them when they looked um, to like roll out of the way. And I'm on a catwalk still, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to use my mag boots to go on the other side of the catwalk. Ah, nice. nice. So I'm upside down. I thought and... about I thought about that when I was getting thrown off, and I just yeah, it was it's you know <laughs> it's a good call though. I'm going to walk uh walk it, but upside down, um until I can get. Where are you now? Thirty three. At what point? Where are you? I'm on the ground. Like I'm back down at the bottom of the stairs. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna get higher and higher, um, and now I can see the monster thing. Mm-hmm. And it's on the ground, or is it crawling up the wall? Yeah, it's about to crawl up the wall. Yeah, in the wall. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, and Arch, you're like you're just on on the I'm wall. Just up on the wall, yeah. But you're pretty low. Are you or are you as high as I am? I guess I'm as high as you are. I'd, I'd have to have had line of sight at least. Okay, mm-hmm. so I'm I'm just gonna get to the top of the catwalk as high as I can go, and. I'm going to take out my um, uh, oxygen what? mask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I had. Oh, I must have not. Oh no, I do. Okay, so I have an expl- a de- an explosive charge and a detonator. Oh yeah. And I'm going to assemble it. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like or anything in real All life. Right. Yeah. Marcy does. And detonator uh, and a brick. Yeah, and I'm going to um, attempt to toss it onto the monstrosity, and then okay, it. yeah, all right. Hmm, I think that could be either a combat or a strength check. Um, unless there's something else you think, uh, another skill or something you think might would be appropriate. Mm. I guess combat. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Oh no, ninety-five. Oh, oh no, the uh, the brick lands um, several feet away uh, from the from the monstrosity. Um, yeah. I I would know how big of a radius it would have of an mm-hmm. explosion. Uh, do I think that it would hit it if I detonated it anyway? Yeah, you think you think you would do some damage to it. Uh, you might also do some damage um, to to yeah. thirty three possibly. Uh, it's hard hard to know. All right, I don't I don't detonate it. Okay. I mean, I but can't... I yell thirty three and I say, "We're doing what that brick." <laughs> and do what with it? <laughs> stop, stop it onto the thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> <I'm gonna run away. laughs> um okay I, I, yeah i'll start moving over to the brick okay okay cool yeah and i'm just trying to back up and fire all right very good um so 33 make a speed check and yeah um arch will make a combat check combat was good um am i still long range to this guy until he starts coming up the wall i guess that's right all right, so just a wound then. Okay, yeah, you blast uh, blast part of its um, kind of uh, one of its pieces off of it. Yeah, um, yeah. it's got like a drill arm. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's uh, yeah, it's gonna it start uh, chasing up after you. And mm-hmm. mm-hmm. thirty three, how'd you I do? I made it to the brick. Okay, all right, you've got the brick in your hand now. If you want it, and. This thing is going to yeah start running up the like and it's like freakishly fast <laughs> as it uh, oh, no. climbs up after you um, and it does make its uh, speed check um, and so it's going to close um, to within range of you and it's going to um, mm-hmm. uh, pull out a, um, a very long and very disturbing looking um, blade that it will oh, no. uh, uh, swing at you. Oh, a 92. That's terrible. All right. It swings over your head. Um, all right. 
I just let gravity take control and like (laughs) for a second. (laughs) Oh yeah, sure. Nice. All right. What are you doing? Um, I think I'm going to start running up the wall also. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So it'll be a speed check for you, Marcy. I'm going to also attempt to get to the wall from the catwalk. I'm not sure exactly what, what, how I could get to from the to the wall from the catwalk? Like, is it are they touching or? Hmm. Is, is uh, there is there's like access to the wall. There's like a couple points where yeah, you can get there. Okay, so I want to do that too, and I want to. Um, I'm I'm aiming for the back of the monster. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to literally climb it and rodeo it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so yeah, I'll have you make. Uh, you'll both make speed checks. And Archer, you you shooting again? Or? Uh, yeah, I'm whispering. The enemy's gate is down, and I'm I'm trying to <laughs> land with my feet on the monster, shooting straight down, and like mag boot onto its metal. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. So that sounds like a combat check. Okay. Is there any? I don't remember if one e has penalties to range. Is that uh, something that got? I don't think so. Changed. Um, I think the, I think the weapon effects change. I don't know that. The, that's, right, right, that's right. That's right. That's right. I was like, because it used to be like minus ten percent or something. And if like Sean that. wants to come into the chat or comments and tell us <laughs> we're wrong, he can. <sighs> Certainly can. Uh, yeah. So that's good. Forty-two under fifty. All right. And so yeah, describe how that um, that looks as you. Yeah, so I just go like totally vertical, and then right when I plant onto the metal with the mag boots, I just <clears throat> unload like point point blank. Uh, mm. Let me get back to my my damage here. I think that changes from wound to two d ten. Yeah, and that's a ten total for damage. Okay. So okay. just trying to trying to show it i mean business put a hole right through the center of whatever flesh i can find all right yeah you you blast away uh, taking a chunk out of the thing's torso and it screams in this like strange robotic um entirely synthetic voice um but filled with like the 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 actual rage and and emotions of of a human all right so speed checks from marcy and uh 33 i failed 88 I got a critical success. Critical fail. Critical success 22. Okay. Interesting. So um, take a take a stress, uh, Marcy, and then uh, make a panic check as your fear threatens to overwhelm you. And then how do you do panic? Yeah, That's D20. the D20, and you're going to try to roll over your, uh, your current, current stress. Level. Yes, 18. 18 very good you're able to keep it together for now for now <laughs> um and 33 you um you get within like you can chunk this thing at uh chunk that brick at at this thing if you want i could what i'd like to do is just run past this thing okay yeah you certainly can do that i run past it you see me if like, I see you, like if the camera's I see you like have the brick gets near and then you see me just like totally blow past everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> super like super speed. Like if, if, if I see you have the brick, I'll I'll use my free hand to point over at the uh uh drive. Yeah, that's 100% where yeah. I'm going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent. All right. The uh the monstrosity um tries to like swing its like leg to try to knock you off, Arch. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, 71. Jeez, Louise. Uh, I'm getting lucky. I either need somebody else to roll for me or I need to, like, make all these monster stats, like, crazy high. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, like, it's it's when you're trying to get something, like, static electricity off of you, <laughs> you know, because I'm, like, stuck to it with the bag boots. Yes, yes. Like, oof, oof, oof. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's thrashing all around. Um, and yeah, you're just riding it like a bucking bronco. <laughs> I'm definitely smiling. All right. All right. Um, and so uh yeah, what are you all doing this round? I'm still headed up towards the drive. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna try and uh I'm gonna try and 
shoot at it. I, whatever leg things are gripping onto the wall. I don't know if it's like mm -hmm. mag gripped or literally gripped, but I'm going to try and shoot there um, and fall with it if it falls. Awesome. And I'm going to do what I was planning and climb on it on, from the back. Um, I'm specifically looking for a control panel. Ah, okay. Mm. A little USB port. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, it'll be a, a speed check for 33. Um, I think um, hmm, maybe a strength check for you, Marcy. Yeah. Dang. Now I'm rolling like shit. 63. <laughs> okay. All right. 26. I mean, I'm still moving. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just not going very fast. Okay. All right. Yep. There's a weird, so, there's a weird bit that poked out of the wall that I had to maneuver around. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And arch um, for 15 damage. Okay. Yes. You absolutely blast um, one of those, those legs and just the, the fork that was like grabbing onto the wall, just like shatters um, and mm -hmm. it begins to fall. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I say, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you're, and, and as this all happens, uh, that's probably why, uh, Marcy, you were not able to uh, locate, uh, you know, uh, a little port uh, that you were, <laughs> as um, as all of you begin to, well, not all of you, but 33, you're still making your way up. Um, the rest of you fall um, down to, uh, to the ground. Uh, let's have you make a body save to see. Um, Which side it lands on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, whoever doesn't make this body save. 94. Ooh, 48. Yeah, both of us failed. Okay, so add, a, add another um, stress. And mm -hmm. uh, let's see, you'll take a... I think you'll take a wound for that. As oh, for sure. You want me to roll a d10? Hard. Yeah, roll a d10. Let's see this sort Hold of on. Thing. That's a okay. six. Okay, I got one. Okay. Um, so, uh, Marcia, you're, you're, you hit the ground hard. You're winded. Um, you'll have, um, you'll have disadvantage on, uh, your roll, um, uh, until you yeah, catch so your breath. You probably ended up on top. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> and I think I ended up on the other side. <laughs> so what, so this, is this, uh, I go down to 16 health because I rolled a one. Is this how it works? Oh, um, so you'll, uh, that takes away one of your wounds. So now you've got yeah, just a second wound. wound. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're, it, it definitely hurt. Um, yeah. and the, uh, the thing does land, like the leg just lands right on your collarbone, um, Oof. arch and it snaps it and you can feel like your left arm is just like hanging there now, almost useless, like the muscles there, but like, Oh, it's super painful. Yeah. I'm screaming and I start to cry because I need that arm to lift the gun. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yep. It's everything you can do to, to try to lift it now, uh, with both arms. Okay. The, uh, the thing is now it is knocked down. Um, it's not quite out yet and it's still kind of thrashing around. It wants to try to get back up. Um, meanwhile, these, uh, these cultists, uh, for that is what they are. Um, have have made their way down the uh, the staircase um and mm -hmm. um there uh there's a couple of them that are trying to like track 33 uh they can sort of maybe sense what 33 may be about here um and they're like starting to throw um like their blades at you um uh, but they, it's so that they're not made for that they can't hit you um and so what uh what are you doing now um in these final moments um, I like 33 wants to like, I don't, is the ceiling curving up to this point? Like how does that's right. Work? Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm, I'm essentially just trying to make my way to this drive. Um, as I get closer, like I know there's a mechanical element. Can I tell anything more about its composition as I get, as I start to be kind of bathed in this bright mm -hmm. red light? Yeah. I mean, you can see that it's, um, it's unlike any other piece of technology you've ever seen before. And it's, it, while it looks from a distance to be sort of composed of a single um, substance, you see that it is actually like uh, intricately woven together of, of wires and metal and, um, and it all funnels down towards this central uh, mass, but it's all kind of like connected via a pillar 
Um, and so that's what you're running towards. And that's what you arrive at is kind of the, the top of this, of this pillar. Um, um, are there, are there wires like I'm at towards the top of the, like, is it a pillar I can get down on or the wires and like supports coming down towards it? Yeah. 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 It kind of, kind of like funnels down. Uh, I want to, I want to shimmy out onto the pillar. Um, mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. um, not so much disconnecting my mag boots as move, like stepping over onto whatever allows me to do that easily. Um, and then kind of controlled sliding down and making whatever kind of, check <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then. Final Fantasy X. <laughs> awesome. Maybe a, um, I think maybe a, either a, no, probably not that. Uh, maybe a strength check. Strength um, check. Yeah. Um, that is a uh, a seven. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I think in in, in fine style, you um, slide down, um, and you're now at like the center of like the room and this like at the the drive itself. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yep. Go ahead. I look for a port. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you see one, it is, it's right there. It's like, it's almost like it wants you to plug in. Uh, I plug in as I yell loudly, uh, detonate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so in that moment, uh, you fully connect with the ship and you, you sense truly for the first time just how strange and and purely evil the the thing that is here is and you have just enough time before your intellect is is consumed by this thing as the 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 code uh begins to enter your brain unwillingly um it uh it just it just floods through you, and you can you can feel the the force of its will um, bending you and changing you, um, and you can see also just purely for the first time how this has reshaped the ship and how the 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 ship is itself no longer just a ship but is something else entirely, and and it's in a way it's almost beautiful for a moment. Um, but then you're sort of brought back to reality and you feel your, uh, your individuality beginning to be erased and rewritten, uh, by this code. And I just um, whisper, this ship is a tomb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are awesome. you going to, Marcy, are you hitting the detonator? Oh yes. I'm going to hit it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And yes, you, you watch as the, the, the ship, um, the, the core, um, explodes as this brick blows up as your, your comrade, uh, 33 is, is incinerated, um, by the explosion. Um, and I think that that is where it will fade to black. As, nice. Uh, yeah. All right. It is, uh, it's time for our reaction roll. Reaction roll is a live stream inside of a live stream. It's our chance to sit down with the creator of a game that we just played and talk to them about what it was like to play that game today. We just finished playing This Ship is a Tomb, which is a third party mothership diabolical derelict uh, crawl. We just played a really in a short version of it today with James Hanna of Fay Light Press. And dang it, if I didn't grab the wrong graphic for the screen. So James' name is not spelled with an H uh, oh, that's normally. Right. We'll make sure the thumbnail is correct on the preview for the video uh but james why don't you tell people a little bit about who you are uh, what sure. you do and tell us about this ship as a tomb sure uh yep i'm i'm james and i created uh, the ship as a tomb along with my uh my business partner isaac warren um who, who's not really uh on, on social media very much um but uh is uh you know we're, we've been friends for for forever and uh we've we've been making games and this is a, like our first big thing um and uh yeah, we, we, Isaac decided we, he was like, let's make something about a big colony ship. And I was like, um, I had been playing Stygian library and I was like, I want to make something that's like procedurally generated. And so that just kind of was where the core idea came from. And then we both came down to sit back down at the meeting and we were like, what if like, we both loved event horizon. And so we were like, what <laughs> if like, what if it's a evil ship? And so nice. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's kind of how it all came together. Um, but, um, 
and then we uh, we found our, our artist um, on ArtStation, uh, Dane Gadash, um, also known as the Trongleman, if you if you look him up, and uh, he's just done some great work for us so far. And um, yeah, so that's uh, we're hoping it'll be out um, it uh, late winter next year. Um, and uh, yeah, it's still on uh, Kickstarter for the next uh, ten days or so until the end of the month. Awesome. Uh, I'm super excited. I popped the campaign up next to us so people can see some of the art, some of the images, some of the other things awesome. uh, that you. haven't been around us. I had a great time playing, but let's hear from some of the other folks uh, that we played with. Uh, Riley, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell people who you are, uh, what you do, and what it was like to play This Ship is a Tomb? Of course. Uh, my name is Riley Coyote, and I'm on Twitter at King Coyote, and I am the lead creative at Afterthought Committee which uh, is basically just a team of people who are putting out as many tabletop games as we can. Uh, I really loved this adventure. I am a huge fan, like you, of procedurally generated stuff and kind of developing things on the fly improvisationally. You know, it's, it's definitely much more my style of running games, and I think it supports my play style a lot better as well. Um, and, yeah, everything being that way kind of settles into this space of horror much more easily where because no one at the table really knows exactly what's going to come up next there's all this space to play with and fill with your imagination it's really it's really interesting um yeah i enjoyed it a lot and you know the 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 title uh this ship is a tomb really tells you what you're getting into because as we just found out we don't know what's going to happen, but I'm pretty sure all three of us are dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, y'all didn't give your intellect over to an om- like uh, an omni- omnipotently evil entity uh, just to find out a little bit more data about the process. Um, yeah. Maybe you make it out. Um, yeah. uh, awesome. Did you have any questions you wanted to ask uh, James about it? Um, I would definitely want to ask, like, how, how much... Are you putting into the generation as far as like being able to mesh if that makes Mm. sense like i know there's kind of two approaches to that where one is like i need to make sure that every single possibility with every other possibility has been accounted for and makes sense or are you just letting it kind of go wild like that's that's Mm. one thing i was really curious about yeah, it's a good question. So far, uh, we're kind of just testing it uh, to see where it might not mesh well. And mm-hmm. so far, it's 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 gone pretty well. I feel like most of the things do mesh up pretty well. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's it's definitely something we're conscious of um, as we're continuing development. Um, For sure. But yeah, we. we as we we weren't really thinking like oh well these things go well together sometime like now for today like because I I didn't roll like the locations and details I just like I picked one I definitely picked ones that that I thought would go together well. right right yeah. for sure mm-hmm. nice that's cool uh, I love it uh, B this is your first time on stream with us so much so glad you were here with us why don't you tell people who you are what you do and what it was like to play this ship is a tomb. Um, I'm Bree. I'm an actor and a circus artist and um, tabletop gamer. And um, I loved this this module. I I loved the the imagery of all the horrific shit. I love this like, especially at the end, the um, the creature that was like part human, part machine. There's something so unnerving about that amalgamation to me um like you know there's lots of different body horror like you can be like a person with an animal or a whatever but there's something about machinery that is so unnerving so disturbing about because you you, you can it's if it, it seems um like unbeatable because machinery is so you know so strong and stuff so i loved that that aspect um the whole thing about, you know, shifting like places where we thought we were going one place and then we were somewhere else. Um, I, I really like that too, because it sort of like, it gets into your head with like the space madness sort of thing. Like, you know, I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know where I'm going to be. Um, and I've never played this game, so I'm not sure if that's part of the, part of the system or if that's part of your module or not. But, um, I liked that too. It, it, it lended itself to, 
the eerie nature of the ship. Nice. That should be good. Uh, Rudy, do you have any questions that you wanted to ask? I guess that's a question. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something you created or is that part of Mothership? So that's uh, that's really the like Stygian library, Emmy Allen, like the the um, what uh, Emmy calls a uh, depth crawl system. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's that's really where that comes from. Um, so full credit to to Emmy for developing that uh, that concept, and we just thought it would be really cool to do it for Mothership. Um, yeah. And so how would, it, how would it work uh, in? Yeah, I know you rolled it for us, but how would mm -hmm. it work normally? Yeah, so it's it's really up to um, how you want to run it because you could absolutely get it all rolled up in advance, uh, which does help the pace, um, right? Uh, but if you really want it to be entirely um, surprising, like the way I've run it in the past and the way I like to run these is just to have the players roll a D10 at each location. So because you need a location, a detail, and then an encounter. And then you may also then, depending on the encounter you roll, you may need to roll to see what you encounter. Um, and so you could have, you know, three or four different roles. And so um, just have the players rolling at the table and just kind of putting it together. Um, and and I think like like Riley said, that's just so much fun, I think, um, and how I really enjoy playing games. Because, I you know, we, we, we all have busy lives. We don't want to spend all our time prepping an adventure. So to just have something you can sit down and like have fun and discover it and, and be surprised um, together. Like that's that's fun. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. The um, the idea that the ship is like alive, mm -hmm. and and malevolent, um, is also sort of that that thing where it's like it feels so much like you don't you're not you don't know if you're gonna make it. Like if this thing is so much bigger than you, it has so much more intelligence than you. It, it it's everywhere. It it's it's everything. You know, like mm. it's it's terrifying. And then this whole this this aspect of you coming in and being like. And now you don't even know where the hell you are. Like, you don't know if it's an illusion that you're seeing or if you're really in some other place. Like, that's, I, I just really like that, um, that detail. Cheers. Well, thank you for your feedback. Really appreciate that from both of you. Yeah, I hope lots of people jump onto the Kickstarter right now who are watching this and back it immediately. You can go to ttrpg.link slash the ship KS if you're able to. I know we had some people who backed uh, already. I know we have some people who have backed during it. Uh, some people who just said this, the title alone would have sold me, but they loved watching uh, us play. Uh, also, if you are watching right now and you have a question about the adventure or the Kickstarter, uh, feel free to drop that in the chat. Or if you're watching later, drop it in the comments. We'll get the attention uh, brought over for you as well. Um, I had, a, I had a great time playing. I know we've been talking about it for a while um, since before EFCon. Uh, we're really glad we were able to to make it happen. Um, I love seeing the project come together. Y'all have done a really great job funding so far, and there's a lot of really cool stuff uh, coming up. Um, that I mean, I, I love the form factor. Also, I think like a lot of times, whether people will do like like small zines and pamphlet adventures are very mm -hmm. common. We very rarely see something with this kind of heft and right. depth to it. Um, uh the system itself is largely lives in softbound like 32 page or less uh That's zines right. and so it's cool to see somebody flex out to this kind of big book format for it um uh, i love i love the sigean library crawl system um i think my, one of my first questions is do you like were there any sort of like how does this integrate in as we were going or was it a pretty seamless drop I, so I'd say the the one thing that that we're still trying to figure out is because um, Stygian has a great mechanic for um, like, hey, you're here. You're it's a library, right? It's this like library that is interdimensional. It's freaking awesome. But like, why do you go to a library? You go to find information, right? So Emmy developed like a whole um, a procedure for um, for finding specific information. And so we're we're working then to develop like, how do you get like specific data out of here? Like, how do you, how do you sort of track a, a party's goal as right. they make their way through the ship? Um, and mm -hmm. so um, that's something we, we felt like the, the system Emmy had for Stygian doesn't quite work. Uh, it's not like a one-to-one. -one. So we're, we're definitely working to figure that out. So they can decide if they want to pop on, pursue their goals, finish it. And then when they hit that lift, be like, we're going back to the ship. Like we got yeah. what we need. Exactly. We're, we're out of here. We don't uh, need to know what's on the other side of these. We doors. we don't need to know, right? Now you guys just happen to roll that lift. That lift isn't always there. No That's way. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I loved it too. I was like, oh, he's giving us an out, and, and we like, wasted it. We 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 should probably leave, but also 
we got to see what's behind I, this door. <laughs> right. I know. It, I was like, this is what a great time for this, for you to have rolled the list. Um, it's perfect. So and, good. And I love like, uh, I love that like my character is doing a lot of deep data diving, but still had mm -hmm. no context for any of the supernatural stuff that was happening other than being like, right. You know, and the way it was translated to us um, is so good. You were doing a great job of that. Like, you know, Oh, what did you see? Oh, they're the crew members are still here. <laughs> Um, I did yes. in for full transparency. It was not the same character at all because my the, my other character was uh, totally crew serving while still hiding a lot from them. I got to play mm -hmm. an emo bot in Vast Grim who had like was interacting with a lot of AIs and other robot stuff behind the scenes that uh -huh. none of the rest of the players knew about, and getting more and more just deadly knowledge downloaded into my head over the course of our <laughs> I think six week long stream of it. So I got to spend a lot of time uh -huh. in a in a in a in a bot's head. And it is one of the most interesting things, like depending on how people interpret the anti-canon of mothership and what an Android is and other stuff like that mm -hmm. can vary a lot. Um, and so it's always interesting as you get into those spaces. Uh, but I also just love, like it is like putting things in my mouth is one of my favorite things to do in as a, as a fleshy character, but for a robot, like I poured into this thing and let it touch my brain is I, I do yeah. really feel like is kind of the digital equivalent um, and potentially Absolutely. even a little bit worse. And so um, I, I, had, I had a blast playing around in it. Uh, and JV did a really good job. I, I, I said it already. I'll say it again. Um, like I'll play like Jeremy, I'll, I'll, I'll toss Jeremy under the bus directly. Like Jeremy Childry is going to ramp up your, your tension and your stress very quickly and then just kill your characters. Um, like that's, that's Jeremy's way of writing uh, creator of dive Gordon Eck, other great, uh, mothership hacks. Um, but it's very quick paced, right? Um, mm -hmm. even in, even when Jeremy does that, usually my stress is not as high as it was at the end of this session. Um, yeah. Because it'll just kill us before we get before it gets that high. Um, but a lot of other games I played, like people not knowing when to, and you, you triggered one very early. I was like, oh, is this going to be a quick ramp up? And really, like almost every single time it happened, like I knew it was going to happen and chose to yep. do it anyways. Like I thought the way it was written and the way you GM'd it was very good telegraphing, was one of the best pacings of the stress mechanic I've seen, zero E or first E. Um, so c either kudos to you as a GM or a writer or both, one of the two. Um, but it also made me very comfortable even towards the end being like, I should take stress for that. I'm going to take stress, right? <laughs> yes. Like, um, I yeah. appreciate it. That, yeah. because it feels fair and you just know like yeah this is this is fine this is where we're headed this is what we're doing um and i i think i felt that that comfortable with very few other mothership modules and the way you play in that played in that space of the mental distress and things which can be is a very complex place to run in uh, was just really good so again whether whether writing or jamming or a mix probably of both uh, it was it was super enjoyable. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had a blast. Um, um, uh, are, what are you looking forward to? You guys, like I said, you're you're you funded in the first hour. Um, you're at about ten times your funding goal right now. Um, you've got you've got eleven wow. days left to go. So you know theoretically, some more money coming in. Ideally, um, what are some of the things you're looking forward to as the campaign goes and as you're building mm. the book out? I mean, our, our stretch goals are definitely exciting. Like we, uh, I think we just unlocked while the stream was going the a, a new round of art, um, which is awesome. Nice. Um, yeah, because because Dane is so good. Um, but then the, our other two stretch goals are are the um, conversion toolkit, um, which uh, it, we were just uh, messaging about. We're going to be offering conversion for Death in Space, which is uh, Fry Legan's new. Um, uh, space adventure game and then also through the void what uh, whoa <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah we're gonna have um there it is oh yes um we're gonna have some conversions so people can um you know it, it will take some homebrew work um mm -hmm. but uh, uh it would uh, offer you some some tools for for making those conversions at home for all your favorite space games all your favorite space games and then yeah i can announce here actually for the first time uh we're going to be posting it um to our page later but we've got um alfred valley um uh, signed Ooh. up to do uh, the solo procedure okay um, and so that's really exciting because Alfred is kind of a, a solo mastermind um, yeah. and has done a really um, awesome job, um, both with lay on hands and um, so far with, with what we've seen of Thousand Empty Light, which uh, Empty I Lights think is, is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Once those are done, if you want us to have Armanda do a so stream of the solo rules, we'd love to oh, do that yeah. also too. That'd be um, super cool. 
Uh, she's would absolutely be cool. great. She did she did thousand uh, thousand minty light also too, and so um, oh perfect. But Alfred does such a great job. Alfred's doing. Um, th- it'll be nowhere it written into the book, uh, but for Through the Void, Alfred's doing a set of hidden puzzles that are scattered across the game that nice. unlock other content outside of the book um, as we go. And he is very good at that also, too. And yes. every time he sends me one, I'm like, all right, I can tell pieces of how this works, but I cannot solve this. You're going to have to tell me. Right. And so we're doing some scaling. There'll be some accessibility pieces built into that also, too. But like Alfred's such a great collaborator. And so very excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Very cool. Uh, I, I'm super excited for y'all. I'm always excited when when things like this come together. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful book. Um, if people have not had a chance to go check it out yet, please, please go to ttrpg.link slash this ship uh, KS to check it out. Uh, and I know this is always the worst question to ask, but I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and ask it again. So you're working on this. This one's going to be, mm-hmm. there's still more work to do, right? Um, mm-hmm. oh, what's, yeah. what's in the future um, for, uh, for y'all as far as what are you, what's your next big project you're hoping to work on after this one is finished? Oh yeah, no. Thanks for asking. Um, so we are developing. Uh, we we did some playtesting at Gen Con of our Crystal Punk um, RPG, which uh, uses a deck of a standard deck of cards as a resolution mechanic rather than dice. Um, and so you split your deck of cards into two, and one you can use for a hand mechanic to activate class abilities, and the other is used um, to uh, yeah to to create resolution. And so yeah, excited awesome. to develop that. And if people want to follow uh, the campaign, they can go over to the Kickstarter page. If they want to follow your work, find out more about Crystal Punk, uh, The Ship is a Tomb, other stuff you're doing, what's the best place for them to look? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, probably our website, faylightstudio.com, or um, you can, um, we do have a Patreon, uh, which is, uh, I think, faylightstudio. Dot, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I can never. Oh, patreon.com slash Faylight Studio, um, where you can actually um, uh, you can uh, see some like uh, previews of our art. If you follow us on there, um, you can you'll get uh, like notified of when we're putting new stuff out um, and you can follow for free. So awesome. Uh, very excited about it. Uh, again, uh, a lot of great levels of rewards, other things like that over on the Kickstarter page. You can get it digital. You can get it physical. Um, you can get um, uh, the core sample version, which has some extra stuff thrown in, or the mm-hmm. first contact version. Uh, I'll go ahead and say it again. This one, uh, I, I would even say like that's a steal at some of those levels for what you're mm-hmm. looking uh, Big, beautiful book, uh, patches, um, community copies are going to get donated. You're going to get... Um, all the physical mm-hmm. stretch goals, which at this point is a whole lot, and those prices. Um, you're robbing James, Hannah, and Faylight Studios when you back about that. <laughs> but go do it anyways. The, they, they set themselves up for it. Um, I'm super excited, like I said, uh, about it. But uh, until next time, uh, we don't have a good way to end streams. And at this point, we're not interested in figuring out how to. So we're all just going to wave at the camera until I take us uh, offline. James, bye. thanks for coming and playing with us. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>